What's happening, guys? It's Adam here. Just before we go into this week's episode, I want to let you know that we do an extra episode of this shit every single week exclusively on Patreon. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a way for you to financially support this podcast while getting a few rewards for yourself. Now, you can sign up for three quid a month, five quid a month, or ten quid a month. The more money you give us, the more benefits you get. But even the people who only sign up for three quid a month, which is what, less than the price of a fancy coffee, you get an extra episode every single week, which is about an hour and a half long, uh, where it's just me and Dan most of the time. You also get early access to these public episodes with the guests you get discounts on merch discounts on live shows early access to tickets for stuff like that and also you get access to every single patreon episode we've already done as soon as you sign up there's a shitload of stuff there it's a massive bag catalog we've been doing this for months now sign up today at patreon.com slash have a weird pod the link is in the description subscribe to this channel while you're there give us a little like on the video and let's get to the podcast that was The Killers with Mr. Brightside. Welcome back to 97.4 FM. We're here with Dan Nightingale uh, from the Haverwood Podcast. How are you doing, Dan? <laughs> Great, thanks for the opportunity. <laughs> Here's Carol with the weather. We're running out of ways to start episodes. I mean, <laughs> you, you sound, the voice that you did sounded like you regretted doing it within like three syllables. You were like, oh, oh, like the will to live. I fucking a commercial radio station. Why? Suck my fat YouTube using nuts. Oh, okay, this is 97.4. It's 97.4. Oh, we've got a text in from Fuckwit. It's 97.4. How much would they have to offer to pay you per year for you to stop doing this and host church? <laughs> And host, host, host like BBC Radio Lancashire. Oh no 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 no! I literally wouldn't host BBC Radio Lancashire because that is just that's just playing to all your uncles and aunties ever. Like yeah, there must be a figure on it. We like local news. We couldn't give a fuck about foreigns. I don't even give a shit about people in different counties. But there must be a figure. What to do? Ninety-seven point four Rock FM. Yeah. Preston's leading commercial music radio station. Uh, but there also must be a figure for you to do BBC Radio Lancashire. Uh, and and I'm not allowed to do this. No. I would honestly, it would have to get to the point where I was fucking with their like annual budget. <laughs> They'd be like, Dan's really expensive. So a quarter like, of a million turn- a year. <sighs> I mean, and I'm never allowed to come back. No. I can't I replace you with uh be careful here. Pete Hartway. Oh, well, I don't mind Pete Hartway. I thought you were going to go for one of my enemies. I um, replace you with... Th- Freddie Quinn! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the phone's just gone down. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, just, I can't do it. I can't do it. This is... We are literally on the first wave of the future where we get to do what Bell Ends on radio are doing, except we get to say nonce as much as we like. <laughs> Oh, the freedom of a quack. Where is, where is there's a... The liberty of a cunt. There's, there's a quota on BBC Radio. Like, you can say nonce, but just not as much as you want to. <laughs> In like six or seven an episode. Good morning, you're listening to BBC Radio Lancashire. Here's Quag with the weather. <laughs> Dan, would you, do the, uh, would you do the Trevor McDonald spot? What's the Trevor McDonald spot? 10 o'clock the news, news ITV. Bomb. Bo- <laughs> Thanks, because I didn't know what you meant, but then you said that, and I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, the 10 o'clock news. <laughs> Um, I think we're, we're, I know this is, sounds ridiculous to say this, but this is getting ridiculous. Look at how we're fucking dressed. No one, no one at ITN's thinking, I think the news could do with a bit of a fresh breath of air. These two lids talking absolute nonsense and they hurting might, people's eyes with the might, t-shirts. They might do at some point though. It'd be better, wouldn't it? It would be better. We would improve. There isn't a single TV show or radio show in this country that we wouldn't improve. Ooh. Bold, mate. Yeah. Not oh, a single TV everyone. show. Not one. Homes Under the Hammer. <laughs> oh, no, for <laughs> definite. Homes Under the Hammer. Come on, mate. Me and him. You're the telling me that one hosts it. Exactly. And he's a boring cunt and he was a shit footballer and you can tell him I said it. Just because you want him to hug you. <laughs> um, You've listened to that episode in depth. <laughs> what news? I'd love to do. How good would the news be with a few quags, a few cunts? A few fox. Kids TV. Oh, crazy. mate. American election is going on as we speak, and it's a clusterfuck. More on this. Adam? I can see me and Dan bringing back SMTV. Yeah. Do you remember SMTV? Dick and Dom. Dick no. and Dom? No, Dick and SMTV was Ant and Dick and Cat Dealey. And we can get Cat Dealey in as well. I know you want Cat Dealey in. No, but you could be Dick and Dom. What would you be? Nonsense. What? Adam. <laughs> well, he can be Dick. 
Dick and Nance. Can can Dick and Nance, Dick and Nance yeah. <laughs> In the studio. Go, go, Dick and Nance. But no, I can't do commercial radio. Me and Carl used oh to play boners, mate. bogeys. Fucking hell. <laughs> bonus yeah, without context. You used to play bonus. Play bonus doesn't fucking give us much. Oh, you'll have to try and find our videos to slide in here. But there's a video of me and Carl. So you know the bogeys. Here, do some extra work. <laughs> do you know the classic bogeys game? Do you know what bogeys is? Yeah, yeah. No, you don't. I was about 34 when uh, so SMTV TV was on. Bogey, no bogeys was Dick and Dom. Bogeys was even after us, but I still found I was about to sit through the grapevine. Right. All oh, right. Okay. <laughs> Didn't you watch Dick and Dom? The grapevine. Not really. Mm. No. Bogies was a uh, you you had to sort of say bogies louder than the last person who said bogies and the first person to get caught you do it in like class so I'd go bogies oh yeah I did hear about bogies this. bogies so me and Carl played it as adults walking around town shouting boners yeah and, and then there's a video of us in uh, the Mayflower. Mayflower Liverpool's premier Chinese five a.m. restaurant and uh, we're playing boners at like right. five o'clock in the morning and I, the restaurant hates us. Yeah, can I just say, <laughs> playing boners at 5 a.m. in a pissed up Liverpool City Centre Chinese restaurant isn't as brave as you think it is, is it? Like, playing it in a soft play at quarter past ten on a Tuesday morning, now that's high-risk boners, isn't it? As a kid comes down the slide and Carl goes, bonus! <laughs> like, 5 a.m. when everyone's like, oh, fuck, I'm not bad! Like, and they're just trying to get, like, prawn toast. <laughs> but, yeah... But uh, can I imagine how it went? Yeah. So Adam went, boners. <laughs> yeah. And then you went, boners. And then he went, I fucking boners! <laughs> no, I think I won. Because he's competitive. <laughs> I think we're both equally as competitive. No, right. I think if you watch that video, then I feel like Dan's already seen it. I do think it, that's how it went. Oh, it, w- usually it starts small. <laughs> boners. We uh, start uh, with like the winning boner. Oh, thanks, Tom. Yeah. Boners! Like, you just go for it, don't you? Because like... Yeah. Because you've got no shame. Didn't someone... I think the game is funny if you fear the consequences. Yeah. So if you're a kid, 12-year-old kid, year fucking seven, year eight, and you shout boners in geography, like that's high risk, isn't it? it when you're a grown man and you're in a pissed up Chinese takeaway at 5 a.m., shouting boners full vo- there's no consequence. Like, you're gonna, they're depending be like, on the Chinese restaurant, you might just think you're ordering. <laughs> I want to take him to Mayflower. You'd fucking love the Mayflower. Yeah. I'd love the Mayflower. Oh, my God. Yeah. We haven't been on a proper night out yet. Nine months of being pod bays. Weirdly, I thought about that as I was loading up a fridge into a into a thing. It sort of struck me that there's, like, no social activities. I've been saying for a while, because this is built... When, when did you get here? Start of August. Yeah. We've been in here religiously since the start of July. <laughs> And it was all like, oh, well, we'll have a big night out and there'll, there'll be a big night out. Maybe we'll do like some something special for Christmas for the pod. And then it's all just got taken away. And I'm like, I was kind of planning to fucking do something. <laughs> but I, I could, I desperately need a night out just to reclaim some of my testicles and be a man. I would, I would shout boners on the, in the taxi on the way to Liverpool. That's, <laughs> well, that's how excited I am. <laughs> we won't tell that story, but we used to. What? Oh yeah, you played boners in a taxi. Yeah, absolutely, um, we. Um, You've got some brutal taxi stories. <laughs> <laughs> some of the taxi stories that you're you're involved with do not like, do not retell well. No, they're harrowing. Uh, um, can we just say that we've got Tom, the intern, Tom. in? Yeah, just because I referenced it. Tom, yeah. Tom, the intern's in. Yeah. If you're wondering who that large person behind Carl is, like. <laughs> <laughs> Been in security uh, yeah, detail. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> oh, and shout out to the security at the Heath Business Park who watched the podcast. <laughs> we love you guys. We love all the work you do. Thank you so Thank much you for, for keeping, keeping us, us safe. safe. <laughs> the best. <laughs> yeah, we. Yeah. Stop naming people. <laughs> There's a fucking twenty minute segment. Are you calling it a gun? I didn't name it. No, you did. I didn't. Shut the fuck up. I didn't. Well, I'll bleep it out then. <laughs> That name you just said, you didn't hear it. It was a big Stop beep. naming. How many times have we had this conversation? Oh, fuck off. You're so professional. <laughs> you could work at 97.8 Cunt FM. What's that Gav Webster bit that always makes me laugh? Fucking listening to the music radio pisses me off. Hi, hey, I'm Dave Shite. I'm on Cunt FM. Join us down at Finnegan's. We're signing Nazi death warrants after the show. Fucking brilliant. Absolutely fucking brilliant. Couldn't give a shit, mate. Play the song. <laughs> Oh, mate, I'm on great form. And I need to make a bit of an apology to you 
and to Carl because I have had some of my vagina tangled up with my knickers recently, mm -hmm. but we've had the scan and the baby's great and Laura has gone from to me and it's chilled out my whole... We had a couple of medical things going on in the build-up to the scan, which is always nervy. And I realised that I was letting that come out in the form of being a fanny on WhatsApp. You've been a bit and, of a fanny, yeah. And it's Four. weird because that's the... Like, you'd think watching the pod that Adam's the one that's aggro and I'm like, hey guys, hey guys. But there's been like three instances recently where I've been like, come on guys, for fuck's sake. And I'm just, I just noticed. But I knew what was happening. Yeah. You had no sugar and your missus is pregnancy mental. And we were just, I was just like, he's, he, he's not sleeping enough. He's not getting his calories. He's not allowed any Rolos. Oh, he's not allowed his KFC. Rolos. I'm getting laid. <laughs> I thought it was affable, Selfish. though. I thought it was quite affable. I thought, oh, right. he's being a human there. Right. Yeah. Because he's a fucking robot, isn't he? Yeah, I'm a robot, yeah. No emotion. You never get any, no, no anger. Yeah. No frustration. I don't let anything else. Yeah, he's he's detached. Detached. How he wasn't put on Ritalin at school, I have no fucking idea. What's well, Ritalin? I, I knew you were going to say that. I don't even know what Ritalin is. Is Ritalin? Oh, I do know. because kids with AD, ADHD, I think. Yeah. I haven't got ADHD. <laughs> 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 I didn't have a school. <laughs> Oh, you fucking have. I, no, I might have yeah, a little bit of it now. You've got a fun version of it. No, I've got a li like a little bit now. It's not. <laughs> 28 year old man. Oh, I'm going to have ADHD. Look at all the colours. Um, I don't think I've got ADHD. I think. Distracted by his own sleeve. <laughs> look what I'm for, you know? Adam, Adam, we're talking about international politics. <laughs> hey? <laughs> fucking mental, aren't <lad. laughs> I haven't got ADHD. Huh? Oh, what? You look, Mad, like, you look like a four-year-old, honestly. <laughs> Looks like a fucking it's, I cool love that t-shirt. Fucking cool. Oh, it's a tea. lovely t-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what it is? You know um, the fucking Croatian kid who played for Michael Jordan's basketball team. No, he played against them. No, he, he didn't. For them? No, no, he never. He played. Yeah, against. he did. He, no, he pl played for them. He played. Oh, I for thought it was on when he played against them when he bullied them. I oh, know no, that was the. Um, okay, good. That was the Pistons one? Sorry. Yeah. He, well, he played the the team they bought him from. No. The team they bought the Croatian guy from. This is is a. This is his, his team's Right, team. let's get it right. Tony Kukoc. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Yeah? I thought he played against them. No, he, he signed for... He was one of the later signings for that uh, victorious... And at oh. first, they what did they do? But then he become an absolute six fucking titles. bowler. Yeah. He turned up after the Olympics in 92, where the Dream Team had gone over to just basically flop the it. dicks around Barcelona. That was it. And he was like the big star of European basketball... Uh, who was the general manager of the of the Bulls who was hated, the little guy oh, yeah, who yeah. just gives the off the worst Nazi vibes ever? Vince McMahon. And they basically were like, oh, you think he's great? You think he's going to replace some of our players, do you? Well, let's just embarrass him playing for Croatia. Yeah, but actually, it, yeah. he did play really well in like the semis or the final or whatever. But he went on to, to win, I think, three titles with did them. Did well. But yeah, this is inspired by the team he came from. Yeah. Else, what? The Croatian team. I didn't look into it. I like the yeah, t-shirt. Belgrade. I was buying yeah. it anyway. And then the guy in Size and the Pool. Shout out to Size and the Pool, by the way. They do some fucking great stuff. Uh, he told me the story behind it. And then I wanted it even more. They're also, shout out to Size in Liverpool. Still open because, you know, they... You can click and collect. Can you? Yeah. Oh, well, that's huge, so, hugely important. Um, What's... ADHD-wise, though, I haven't... <laughs> That is beautiful. <laughs> the fact that the person who's being accused of ADHD is getting his back on track. <laughs> so I think I owe you an apology. I'm like, Croatia, size. <laughs> but I don't think I've got ADHD. I think sometimes people aren't entertaining enough to keep me interested. So I get bored and then I just, I turn off. That's yeah. not ADHD. That's other people being shit at talking. Yeah, that's the, what's happened there is you've justified your ADHD through arrogance. <laughs> yeah, that is an arrogant defense of yeah. ADHD. No, 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 no. I'm not easily distracted. You're just fucking dull. <laughs> As he says, checking Twitter at a gangbang. <laughs> I'm fucking bored of tits. But I was good in school. Like I, I, I didn't have ADHD in school. I was quite good. I, I did well at school. You know what I mean? I think we all well, had a bit of ADHD point. at school, didn't we? Like, because it, it's pretty boring, isn't it? No, I smashed Eight, it at school. Uh, uh, what every day you turned <laughs> up, you didn't until sixth form until bogies turned up, and then and then it bonus. We were like twenty three when that happened. Right, good, and not welcome at the school. <laughs> um, yeah, we. I, I did well at school up till A level, and then I was working in McDonald's, 
who obviously now there's a bit of a beef with because of fallout, whatever. Uh, um, I think they're over it. Um, <laughs> no, they're not. No, they're not. I get fucking death threats from them every week from the ge- general manager, from fucking Ronald. Do you think? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to send a fucking clown face in the, in the park. Is that how it happened? Left on my doorstep yeah. on the 1st of November. Yeah. Um, Halloween joke, man. You like that? <laughs> Tony! <laughs> Tony! Tony! <laughs> um, but yeah, I did well at school. But then when I got to sixth form, I didn't take it seriously. And I was working in McDonald's. Off until there was times where I would go to work in McDonald's. For, meant to do like a four till midnight shift. Someone wouldn't turn up for the overnight shift. So I'd stay from midnight till seven in the morning and go straight to six form after doing a 16 hour shift and just sleep in psychology class. But I wouldn't get an absentee because then I wouldn't get me EMA. I gi- I'll give you something, Adam Rowe. You are a worker. Yeah. I'll give you that. You're, you you are a bit of a gig whore and it turns out you're even a gig whore back before you even did gigs. Yeah. Who, who wants to do a shift after doing a shift before six form? It was I, I, I it, it was the money, yeah? yeah. I'd get like sixty quid for it or something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'd be like, like when you're sixteen and you're in a bank, and you got the best fucking traps in Cardinal Lean in sixth form. You didn't though. I didn't. You well, got to be a worker to I do stand up. You've got to be a worker to to succeed at anything. Like they don't tell you that. They're like, what does it take to succeed? Just you got to just do it. Work hard. Don't be a cunt. I mean, be smart. Be talented. But it's all directly related to actually turn up and fucking do it. Because as we know from stand-up, there's loads of talented people you see roll in and roll out and you're like, you've fucking wandered off. You haven't turned up and done the shift. There's loads of fine comedians who, because they always turned up and were tenacious about turning up and getting the gigs, they've developed. I mean, the ideal is talent plus the fucking graft. Yeah. But the graft is massively important. Often as well, the most talented, and this, I don't think this is just in comedy, like, you see it in football as well, like, the most talented player isn't necessarily the best player, and it's the same with comedians, the most talented comedian isn't necessarily the best comedian, because the graft doesn't come with it, and because they're the most talented, they're like, oh, I'm the best, so I don't really need to work out, like, Paul Pogba Paul at Pogba Man United yeah. could be one of the best players on the planet at the minute, and he wouldn't get in most teams, he doesn't get in Man United team, Not reliable. they're fucking shite. Like, you know, the higher you go up in everything, though, when you get into the top tiers. Yeah. I remember doing that when I first went to Edinburgh with the big value, like, years ago. And you were like, I was used to being, like, one of the best new acts wherever I went. And then you got to Edinburgh and you sort of looked across the line and went, oh, here, everybody's good. Yeah. And then it really becomes, like, the pinnacle just starts. And by that point, you've got a combination of the most talented, smartest, funniest people who fucking graft. Like, I remember watching John Richardson do what he does for the first time and going, oh, oh, there you go. <laughs> and it must it must be like what the, the lads at Sport in Lisbon back in 2002 were like, when they were like, fuck, I've made it into the Sport in Lisbon youth set up. And then Cristiano Ronaldo at like 15 just went, and like, you're like, oh, right, that's what the very top level looks like. We've mentioned Tony Carroll a few times on this podcast, who's a friend of mine, a uh, really good friend of Carl's as well, and former comedian, doesn't do it anymore. Tony never, ever put any effort into comedy, ever. He was lazy as fuck, didn't want to do gigs, cancelled gigs because couldn't be asked going to them, didn't put any effort in. But natural funny-wise, I don't think I know anyone in the world. I've, I've met the best comedians on the planet who's as naturally funny as him. If Tony decided, I want to be a comedian, I'm going to put as much effort in as I do, or the, as fucking a, a grafter. Steve Bougier, who I started with, he works his ass off constantly writing. Steve Bougier comes off stage, gets his notebook out and goes, right, that went well. He's obsessive. He's, he's, yeah. If Tony Carroll put that level of effort in, Tony Carroll would have been unstoppable. And, yeah. he just, he, and he hasn't got it, and he'll never have it either, because it's just not within him. And you've also got to be able to take the... This, if you're like, God, you're talking about stand-up again. We're not just talking about stand-up, but stand-up, the, the bad days in stand-up are so, it's more intense because you're having a bad day in front of 150 people. But it's everything, especially comedy though. It's the ability to go, right, I'm going to work hard at it and I'm talented at it, but we also be able to take the fucking hits. Because yeah. early on in comedy- It's about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you get hit. Yeah. You keep moving forward. Rocky. Yeah, Rocky. 
Nailed it. Was it? I'm so sorry to any <laughs> stroke survivors that watched that. So I felt like might have been. Do that again. And now about a heart in your head. It's about how hard you can get here and keep moving forward. That's how winning's done. I think it's pretty clear that this podcast isn't going to do well post car Thank crash. you, Tom. Finally, the voice of reason has arrived on this podcast. You two fucking gobshites looking at me like I'm a fucking idiot. And he's looking at me like, well done, Adam. Really good impression. I think I'm he's sick Tom. of the fucking bullshit treatment if I get you, from you If you, you want to keep this job permanently, keep going with that shit because he'll love it. Like, that, thank you, Tom. <laughs> Make him an ally. Fucking awful. There you go. Was it, do better. Go on. I can't. Scene. No, I'm not saying I can, but that's like me saying <laughs> when Ronaldo misses a free kick, it was shite. I can't score it. Well, probably cook some sick of footy and that, but I can't do it. I just, you can't either. You're sitting there on your fucking high horse. That was shite. Don't Lay we do Rocky? Do then? Don't we do Rocky? Yeah. Hess. Hess, Hess. Oh, what scene's that? I haven't seen that scene. The boxing Can scene. you do better? Even Drago. Go on. Do Rocky. Do, do it. I, I'm not pretending to do Rocky. Do Rocky. Hey, 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 hey. Just because... I can't do it doesn't mean that it wasn't shit. <laughs> exactly. If we'd have all come to this as like the Rocky impression meeting, and I was like, I'm fucking sick at this, you'd be like, do better. But I'm not saying anything, but that was, <laughs> no, but it wasn't. I'm still was it? <laughs> <laughs> Rocky John. It was a great Elton John. It was a really good Elton John. <laughs> See? <laughs> Have you cried on the desk? You've cr no, it's it's always that so cannot be COVID friendly. Your tears. It's this. I honestly thought you just it's a bit of condensation. I thought you'd wept on the desk. <laughs> no. <laughs> Croatia's good though, isn't it? What? Yeah, that's where the sea shit. <laughs> Tony. <laughs> I do like it. It's size, <laughs> honestly, size is open. It's basically, if you're not from the UK, size is like a decent shoe shop, sell a few other bits of clobber, don't yeah. they? So they get quite a few like uh, hyped stuff. Like they get like limited edition trainees, limited edition, like this t-shirt I don't think is like widely available. It's essential. It's the best streetwear store in I the know. Northwest until I open it's mine. An, I know there's a lockdown, but... These, Lost art up there as well. These are essential yeah, fashion but it's, items. That's more of a that's more of a skate shop, like the streetwear, yeah. as in. Yeah. Yeah. Lost, shout out Lost I, it's quality that they're doing takeaway, takeaway. Loads of them. Fashion. I walked through Liverpool, um, Liverpool City Centre yesterday morning, um, at like ten o'clock, and it's fucking. I'm telling you this. In the first lockdown, I never went near the city centre. No, nope, same here. Oh, all. we went. We went to Chester once just for a bit of exercise around the river. And we realised we'd walked up through town to get to the car and it was five o'clock on a Tuesday and it was like 28 days later. There was just no one on one of those noncy PSO fake policemen. And he was like, hello. Yeah. It's, it's different now, isn't it? Yeah, like it's it's quite scary. It's quite like haunting to see a city centre. The sun's fucking in, on its way to being right in the middle of the sky. And everything's shut, apart from McDonald's and Starbucks. <laughs> like, And is that what's happening now? Yeah. Right. So I woke up in Liverpool City Centre on... <laughs> great, <laughs> great save. <laughs> uh, when when did we go for the bevy? I didn't go for the bevy. We did. <laughs> is it when, essential Wednesday information? Night it when, Wednesday night. Great. So Thursday morning. And walking through town, it's deserted. There's just nothing open. But like all the shops have got, you can order online and click and collect. So they've still got a staff member in there, but the shutters are down, but they've all got signs on the door. Including it's almost size. Like Resurrection. I love Resurrection. They always give me a bit of discount in there, the dead sound. So I check out Resurrection as well. Odds, yeah. It's almost like, you know, when you go to the garage and there's a guy that won't let you in, mm. but he'll serve you through the window. It's almost like the clothes shop when mm. I get to that point. Like, come on, mate. Can I have a hoodie? No, a blue one. No, a, no, one of the night ones. Oh, fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> it's some fucking trainees. No, not them trainees. Oh, fuck it. Yeah. Do you say trainees, yeah? Just because I'm hanging around with you, Lids. Oh. Do you say trainees? Obviously. Yeah. Not trainers. Trainers. What do you say, Tom? I said trainers. Yeah. <sighs> Welsh. I, yeah, I thought you were talking about people who were trainers. <laughs> We've got to give them a mic. <laughs> Hi, say hi, Tom. Say hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. Oh, oh my God. Welsh Tom. He's a nice lad. <laughs> a lovely, sultry voice. What? 
Whoa! Oh, that's, that, oh, that's honestly, your that's your compliment, isn't it? Industrial Tribunal. There, he works for us, mate. That's disgusting. Yeah, and I would fuck him if he let me. <sighs> Day one. Disgusting. Well, maybe to, maybe Both Tom's together. Like that. A dream Mama sandwich. Like well, Tom's that. nodding. That's how much he wants this. <laughs> you can tell the economy's in the bin because Tom's thinking about fucking Adam to get the job. <laughs> <laughs> There's not a lot of work in Wales at the moment, but I got an opportunity in Runcorn, and yes, I got sexually abused, but uh, it was worth it. Is it that a good accent? No, it's South Wales. Sorry, mate. I can't do Wrexham. It, it, it rang true, though, to be honest. Oh. <laughs> I honestly <laughs> cannot tell the difference between what you've just did and what he's... Are they not the same accent? No, it's, I'm, I'm doing fucking Gavin and Stacey, aren't I? I can't. I, uh, my banger's not very good. All right, all right, I don't know what I'm doing. Banger, Anna. I don't know. That is a pretty good banger. Is it? I just do... All right. <laughs> North Wales, I always do, for some reason, like, smackheads from North Wales, like, all right, I got some heroin, you want that? <laughs> Why does it sound like he's been, spent I, a lot of time in Liverpool? I don't know. Because <laughs> <laughs> smackheads are international, lad. Is this meant to be Welsh? No. <laughs> it's gone off the fucking rails, I, kid. He asked me for change yesterday. <laughs> All right. I'm actually from Buenos Aires. <laughs> I can't do it. That's what I'm admitting. What, I happens, can't do. what happens to the homeless people now? Like, just bring it back onto like a really so, like, sad bit. What happens to homeless people in lockdown? Well, Are actually, we... uh, Rishi Sunak, the <laughs> Chancellor at Sheker, has announced £50 million of help for the homeless during uh, lockdown too. Has he? Well, yeah, I just I literally read it yesterday. Oh, sweet. So, but what? So, fifty million. It's about twenty quid each. Like, here, yeah, get some good smack tonight. Yeah, but like, no. How I, do I, they get it? Through <laughs> bank transfer. What? <laughs> <laughs> how how are these homeless people going to get access to this fifty million quid? Because normally you have to go through a process and you have to like get like letters sent and send your ID and that. Where are they getting letters sent? I don't work for the exchequer. Well, stop dropping fucking. Well, it's it's a it's a it's not. I'm not dropping mistruths. I'm not like fake news in. Yeah. But I but it's a I I've taken us off track. It's here. probably like um, it's a good question. What do the homeless do? It's probably like local shelters and stuff. Uh, maybe put more volunteers out. Can you blag it? Do you reckon you could just make yourself a homeless? You do. Do you do every morning? <laughs> what I mean, to, to just get, turn up and be like, ah, oh. to get some homeless help. Yeah, park the Kia round the like corner. You're skint because Pe- there's people. Who people are... do that though, don't they? They they beg and then they get in the car and fuck off. Yeah, I've seen genuinely, and I give homeless people money all the time. If I've got a bit of change and they ask, I do give it. But I've seen a van it's of just homeless a good guy, people pull Carl. up. He's a good guy. I seen a van of homeless people pull up outside the bombed out church in Liverpool, and they all jumped out the van and went off in different directions yeah. with their bags and stuff. I used to, I used what? to work in a, a restaurant. Yeah, a, a van of homeless people. Yeah, yeah. When they were they being dropped off from a shelter or something? No, no. They were it's, being it's a job off from in the it? big mansion. I used to work in. on Bold Street. Where, where's homeless HQ? Um, Where have they all come from? Just can't, just saying, it's a job's not good enough. Press that, and by the sounds of your fucking accent. <laughs> all right, go on. I used to work on Bold Street, and there used to be a fella sitting outside, an Indian fella, and uh, he'd come looking homeless. He'd have his sleeping bag, blah blah blah. He'd sit down, and he'd make more on a Saturday night than I'd make in the week. And I'm, that's not me going, oh, he'd make loads of money. It's like you'd doing the free me, fringe and the paid fringe, you know? tell me he'd make like four tonnes on a Saturday night because Bald Street's where all the like drunk students go and look, like, here's a five. Like. Yeah, but he's a headline homeless guy, isn't he? You've got to work your way up to that through the ranks. <laughs> Mate, if you're sat- Saturday night on Bald Street, you've got to be doing it 10, 15 years before you get that slot. He's a pro, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to start out in the unpaid ranks. Tuesday, yeah. Tuesday in Whitchurch, that's a fucking... <laughs> You're lucky to make a tenner. I've always thought if you're homeless, right? <laughs> Here we go. Buckle up, everyone. What, you know, like, because, like, sometimes I'll go and do a gig in, like, a shit town, like Coventry or something, right? Coventry's taken multiple hammerings recently. Milton Keynes, then, That's right? A, yeah. Milton Keynes. Yeah, okay. And you'll see a homeless person. And I'm always like, why are you here? You could be in <laughs> LA. What? <laughs> what? He means that as well. That's terrifying, that. <laughs> you could go anywhere. You know when people comes up and go, excuse me, mate, can you lend us 22p for me bus fare? Imagine if someone came up and went, all right, lad, could you lend us 22p? I need a flight to LAX. <laughs> oh, I've got a fucking transfer at JFK. It won't be as expensive as you think, though, because they don't need to come back. <laughs> it's a one-way ticket. It's a one-way they ticket. haven't got a passport. <laughs> I'm at How do you know? And they can't just because they've lost their house. You can end up homeless and still keep most of your stuff. Some of them will have Xboxes. <laughs> 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 it's a 
genuine question. Why would you be homeless in Milton Keynes? You could at least go to fucking Edinburgh or like London or Brighton. Brighton's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, Br- being Brighton is. Yeah. You've got mates, haven't you? Being homeless in Brighton must be slightly easier than being homeless <laughs> in Aberdeen. Exactly. So why aren't they all there? Right. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why are they Well, homeless? hopefully they'll watch this on their Xbox. <laughs> You know when they're all around the big flat screen TVs outside like the Debenhams entrance that they, they all live in, in your imaginary fucking world, where they're making 400 quid on tax, by the way. <laughs> fucking on tax. We used to give him coffees and everything. He fucking smashed it. He just sit on his ass. Have you got an answer for me? I need some closure on this. Why, Why? don't they go to somewhere nice? Why are they staying in fucking Milton Keynes? And where would you where live, the- Adam, if you were homeless in the UK? You can't go abroad. Why? Mate. Because you can't. But I've got a passport. I've got one. I brought it with me today. You can't just, well, you know, you can't just move abroad legally, very, very easily. Right now, you couldn't do it illegally either. You're gonna be a fucking refugee. Yeah. Right. But Adam, you earn really good money now, and you don't, you don't live anywhere else. Yeah. Why would you have nothing and then be like, because it's I've time got, to travel? Because I've got ties. I want to see Malaysia. I've got ties to, you know. Yeah. I've got shit going on. I've got me family, me friends, me house. You right. know, this studio, the podcast. Yeah, I can't just fuck off. There's there's things going on for but me. But if you if, if you're, you're homeless, if you lost, lost all of that, yeah, then I'd go to I don't know. Go on, no, stay in the UK. No, no, <laughs> I don't want to see where this let let his somewhere imagination like, somewhere like either really cool, like <laughs> like like <laughs> LA, New York, right. or somewhere fucking mad. Do you know what I mean? Siberia. Go on. Yeah, like Rio de Janeiro or like. I'm thinking about becoming homeless, but <laughs> fancy the Maldives. Do you know how long? But why aren't they there? Because it's not easy. I am 39 and earn well, and I haven't been to the fucking Maldives. 400 quid on a Saturday night? He's not paying rent, is Do you he? Know how long so he could save last? it? How long would you last in a favela in Brazil? Homeless. <laughs> so there's all the Brazilian homeless people there, yeah. and then you turn up. Yeah, but, right, lad. Yeah, but I'm a laugh, aren't I? I can't entertain them. Um, who's, who's drinking? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone. <laughs> Turn up in that t-shirt. Yeah, but like I'd go like somewhere like cool, like you know Dubai, New York, <laughs> no, LA. Don't, don't let you in. No, what? hang on, hang on. What ne- do you mean ne- they won't say, let you in? Say, say as far as they're concerned, I'm going on holiday. Say, I've got a backpack. They don't know it's got a sleeping bag. I really in. wouldn't clothes. try and being homeless in Dubai. <laughs> Just be careful of those places. Like, oh, you're homeless. You're in the fucking bin. Yeah, they don't entertain well, maybe anyone. Not Dubai, then. You'd be yeah. a slave in ten minutes in Dubai. Maybe, yeah. Dubai's not a great one then. I don't know, but like somewhere or somewhere like cool, like the Midwest. I think Wisconsin. I think the the thing is about desperation and hitting absolute rock bottom and slipping through the cracks of of civilized society is you don't start thinking location, location, location. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but when you're on the bones of your ass, you may be like got a dependency on pretty debilitating class A drugs. I don't think you're thinking, don't fucking tight. hell, not all like I've that. lost absolutely everything, but this view, shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm, I think I would, and I don't know why more of them don't. I don't know why the best places in the world aren't just overrun with homeless people and all that. Well, I think San Francisco <laughs> is actually, you know. Is it? I think San Francisco's got a major homeless New York homeless has got one of the worst homeless they are, So maybe they are doing it communities. then? Yeah. yeah, but they haven't travelled there. They're, so, just, they're just from that country. They don't, it, it's not like, you know, the French exchange when you're at school. You don't have like homeless exchange. Like, <laughs> send the scouts smack heads fuck to fucking it. Mozambique and we get one of theirs. Steve from Bold Street in Liverpool spent a fortnight in San Francisco. <laughs> right? There aren't many smack heads in Mozambique either, probably. But like, do you not understand the logic of what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't yeah, think yeah, you yeah, do. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think you understand it. We explain do. it to me why it doesn't happen then. Because none of you will give me an answer yet. The, the, are, we, are you being silly about the international travel thing? You that, are, yeah. But, no, I mean, a lot of homeless people do end up in London. Right. They are drawn there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There's so a, they are a, there's, a, there's, Yeah. There's so a why, mass- why are there any anywhere else? Do you know what I mean? Why aren't they all going to the best place? Right. And Bournemouth's lovely, especially in the summer. I yeah, because it's like comedy. All the comedians move down to London, and then anyone who stays does well. Fair enough. Do you know what I mean? See, that's it, a good answer. There's opportunities, isn't it? Fucking idiot. Bold Street guy. Why would he? Look? He's he's making a lot of Smash work locally. It. I go to Lake District. That Bold Street guy is the homeless version of Paul Smith. Why is he going anywhere else? He's yeah. fucking raking it in on Bold Street. Why would you go to Lake District? It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, but there's not as many people there to get money off. No, but 
the people who are there are quite affluent and nice. Yeah, but they don't tend to give money to homeless people because they're don't all fucking them. Tory tight twats. You don't know them. I, I do. I love the lakes. Yeah, you love the lakes. You don't love the people. I think we're applying weird logic to where you want to be homeless. Yeah. Where's nice? <laughs> well, I'd rather be somewhere. I, I get it. I'd rather be somewhere It nice. needs to be nice and chocker. Right. Do you know what I mean? Loads of people. Nice views. New York. LA. Tokyo! There aren't any. There aren't any what? Are there really no homeless, homeless people, people in Tokyo? I say, the, I say the percentage of homeless people in Japan is probably next to zero. Well, then, that, even better. So I'll be the only one there. I'll be fucking minted. I'll have a penthouse I reckon in Tokyo I saw in maybe six months. three homeless people in the entire time I was in Japan. Right. And it wasn't in Tokyo. Do they have a drug problem in Tokyo? By the way, if you've just picked up the podcast, it's been a weird six minutes, but Carl, our producer, lived in Tokyo for a year. No, not Tokyo. It was in did Nagoya. He? Nagoya. Yeah. Sauce. Um, Place not. Um, no, they don't. It's alcohol because alcohol is dead cheap, and the business and like the the work commute like ethic is you work all day, twelve, thirteen, fourteen hours. Like us, you get fucked in the night, and you do it again because if you don't get fucked up on beer and stuff, you realize your life's fucking empty. It's officially the most unhappy country in the world. Is it Japan? Yeah. Highest suicide rates, highest rates of clinical depression. Yeah, yeah, but how much would you smash it if you were the only homeless person? Yeah. Adam Rowe turns up, he'd be a fucking celebrity. Yeah. Just sleeping rough around Nagoya. Yeah. yeah. Tokyo. They yeah. don't. They Genius, allowed. mate. It'd be like the fucking video for, um, remember the script song, The Man Who Can't Be Moved? And they're just like, who's this handsome guy on the corner? Me. <laughs> yeah. Don't think that'd happen. They wouldn't allow it. They wouldn't allow it. They just don't allow homelessness. Or they just give him a house? No. They just probably just disappear. What, to kill them? I don't, I'm not going to say that, but I'm saying... But you are ins- insinuating it. No, I'm not. Homeless well, that's what I meant about... Exist, and homeless people definitely do exist. Yeah. I don't know where they are. But because the Olympics is going there, there's definitely none. They said, I'm in London. They all just conveniently disappeared, didn't they, for this, a yeah. year? Yeah, there was no... Uh, yeah, they? No homelessness in uh, Russia when the uh, World Cup was on. Yeah. There was no, like... Th- like thugs, like football hooligans. And they're not giving them out. We'll make sure they go away for a little hey, bit. Hey, listen, shout out Japan. I am not saying that, but I'm just saying. I don't know where they go. I reckon we've uncovered a fucking mass conspiracy. Yeah, it's like the chickens, isn't it? Yeah. you what seen chickens? Um, comedian, Tez, he did a bit in his Edinburgh show one year about like, where are all the chickens? What? Where are all the chickens? What do you mean? So, so like, true, how many K- how many chickens do you reckon KFC go through every day? Oh, you mean where are all the battery farms? Yeah. Like, where are they? Like, there's millions of chickens yeah. being eaten every single day. Well, isn't it 300 million a month in Mackey's and Nando, uh, KFC and Nando's alone? Exactly. 300 million chickens a month are getting scrammed. In the UK? Yeah. And that doesn't include Chicken Cottage or Nabsies or, you know, Crunchy Fried Ch- all them places, or, you know, roast dinners. As their Tesco. They're there's, underground, aren't they? There's billions of chickens going missing, and no one knows where they are. Well, they're not going missing. <laughs> they know where they end up, don't they? In your fucking tum-tum. No, but I mean, they're missing. Like, where are they right now? Do you know what I mean? Adam. So, okay, I see what you're saying. Like, it doesn't make sense. Have you ever seen where... a chicken? <laughs> like... <laughs> I ever, don't reckon no. real, you know. <laughs> no. do, do you know that KFC don't like have fucking chicken hunters? <laughs> that would be an amazing advert for KFC. Come to KFC to eat chicken. Here's an advert showing our chicken hunters. <laughs> 6 a.m. on the hills of Roncorn. The chicken hunters for KFC. I see you on. <laughs> we'll have a Zynga Tower burger tonight. Have you, no, They're have battery you, farms, aren't they? They're in the countryside. They're fucking huge and massively depressing. They're Auschwitz for poultry, basically. Right. But how many are they and where are they all? Because we're talking Just because you don't know where a poultry farm is doesn't mean they don't exist. Hold like, your, your fucking record... Well, have you seen a chicken? There's no chickens walking around wild. <laughs> I see cows in the fields. I see fucking sheep in the fields. Makes sense. I drive through fucking Nancy countryside. Cows, sheep, where the fucking chickens? We had Doesn't so make much. sense. It's the fucking Illuminati. <laughs> They're running fucking KFC. We had so much chicken on Wednesday. It was obscene. 
Oh, shout out. Let's give them a shout out. Slims. The restaurants in Liverpool, when it opens back up, go check them out. They're called Slims. And on a Wednesday, they do Wing Wednesday. Do you like chicken wings? Yeah. Unlimited chicken, chicken wings, off the bone. a beer, and chips, 10 at each. Essential. Open. Yeah. Thank oh. fuck for that. <laughs> um, so I think we've left in this section more questions than we have answers on where do homeless people go and where should they go and where do chickens come from? But it's been a mental journey and apparently he doesn't have ADD. What's happening, guys? Today's sponsor is Beer52.com. They are the UK's number one craft beer discovery club. And they've teamed up with us to give our listeners a free case of beer. That means you get eight free beers, an award-winning beer magazine, and a tasty snack as your first free order. And it's free. You pay nothing. You just pay the £5.95 postage and packaging. You'll then be a member of their Craft Beer Discovery Club and they send you a different theme of beers every month. Past themes have been the beers of Belgium, the beers of Korea, California, all over the world. Every month, a new theme and they're always a belter. You'll find craft beers that you'll never find on your own and also you can pause your membership at any time. So do us a favour, support the podcast, support our sponsors, go to beer52.com slash word. That's B-E-E-R 52.com slash W-O-R-D. Every time you sign up, we get a little bit of money. So you get your free beers. There's a little bit of money to support the podcast. It's win-win. I'm a member. I love it. Let's get back to the podcast. We're we'll going to get some beers. Pause it here. Go and get some beers. Beer 52. Well, um... Question. Question. Boom. 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 Question. Tell oh. me what you think about me. Eyelids. Ah, yeah. Got some questions. Thanks, Carl. Uh, if you had, if you all have such success that your household names, yeah. Uh, so your celebrities, and you have the chance to have a cameo in any TV show or film. What would you choose? Stephen Fry was recently on The Simpsons, but my personal choice would be Family Guy because I think it's fucking hilarious. Cheers, Dan Johnson. So, so you're you're fucking you're a mega star, and you get a cameo on, a t- like when Brad Pitt was on Friends and shit like that. But, yeah, was well, it one that's been made now? Because when you say films, you're like it's t- tricky with films. So you've got to really say TV shows because you can't cameo on a film that's yeah, already been made. It's been remade, or con- for the purposes of fantasy. for the purpose of this. You can go back and you can put yourself in it. I, yeah. think, I think that's like massively arrogant to go, I tell you that film that I really love. You know, like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood? Fuck Leo. Yeah, but I it's think a cameo, I could play it? Rick Dalton. It's a cameo. Yeah. It's not fucking, you're not, you're not Denzel. Um, you're the guy in the background. Um, it's weird though with Game of Thrones, isn't it? Because Game of Thrones having an English cast, like Game of Thrones is one of the biggest TV productions of the last 10 years. And I met a bloke that was fucking in it. He does comedy. You know the guy yeah. with Tourette's? Oh, yeah, What's yeah. he called? Has he got Tourette's? Yeah. He was one of the Night's Watch, wasn't he? It's Ben, isn't it? Yeah. Ben. But you, it's the weirdest thing, because I was... sound. I was, yes, yeah, lovely guy. And he did comedy for a bit, and he's, I think he's still doing it, but he's Geordie. an a- actor as well. And just to be in the frog and bucket... And look over and be like, because the frog is like, same with hot water. It's that place that you're there all the time. You're used to the usual faces. And then you're like, there's that guy from the Night's Watch in uh, Game of Thrones just having a pint. What's his name, lad? I want to get his name right. Um, He, at one point, was their longest serving character. I've never watched Game of Thrones. Just never never got into it. I really enjoy it. Um, But I, I know that like people just get fucking murked. Like, main characters just, they're dead. Soz, move on. At one point, he was the longest serving. Benjamin Crompton. Yeah, Ben yeah, Crompton. Yeah, Ben Crompton. His, uh, His character grew and grew. It was quite a small part, but mm-hmm. it, by, yeah. but towards the last few series, he was, it, it, I think he was even oh, like... Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, he was like one of the fucking main heads in the Night's Watch. Yeah. yeah. You didn't watch it, did you? No, he was one of the long. He was the longest he serving, like, longest living character. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. ended up like the captain of the Knights. Cap- he hey, spoilers! I haven't fucking seen it. I'll spoil it for you. Yeah. Sure. No, 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 la, 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 la,
What character would they have a 28 year old Scouts lad on friends with? What? I can do an accent. Right. Hey, I'm walking here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What? Get out of my way. I want a coffee. Whoa. <laughs> a coffee. Amazing. Is he, do, is he doing his Rocky impression again? Um, what, can you just come up with a character? What What in Friends? Yeah. So you've got the you've got the six of them. Where do you think your character would drop in? So I reckon I'd date Rachel. Oh, I knew you were going to say right? that. Right, yeah, Piss yeah. Ross off. But Chandler, I'd, I'd make like a joke and Chandler would be like, he's all right, Tim. Me and Chandler and Joey become best mates and we slowly edge Ross out. And by series 10, Rachel gets off the plane for me. All right. Not much, quite a big cameo there, <laughs> isn't it? You've completely changed the fucking narrative of one of the biggest hit TV shows. Why don't you play a 28-year-old Scouse homeless guy in New York? <laughs> In one of the scenes, like, hey, lad, I fucking travelled here, mate. Yeah. I'm an international fucking homeless. Yeah. Check out the Xbox. <laughs> Could do two pints as well. Two pints of lager, a pack of crisps. Now, that's a little bit more believable. Yes. Yeah. I think that's your level. Yeah. I reckon I could be like Johnny's brother or something. Yeah. You know, Ralph Little's character. Um, I'd be Nanny Potter, me. I'd be a Death Eater. Yeah. Yeah. He'd be Nanny Potter just fucking marking. English tests. If you got shrunk down by CGI, you've got quite a pointy face. You'd make a fucking brilliant goblin at Gringotts. <laughs> Wouldn't you? A Scouse goblin. We've come to see Mr. Potter's Hello. safe. And you'd be like, all right, lad, have you got the fucking key? And you'd have those long prosthetic fingers like, have you got the fucking key, lad? So is Voldemort. Ah, because you're bald. <laughs> <Nailed it. laughs> Colby. Um... Ooh. I'll tell you what I watched recently. Oh, no! The Good Wife! The Good Wife. I'd be a, a lawyer in one episode on A Good Wife. In a, in all oh, How to Get Away with Murder. I fucking love How to Get Away with Murder. Like, I want to be a lawyer. Can Dan answer the question? Nah. Don't worry about me. No, I worry about you, Dan. Come on. Um, I... I just I had a really noncy one. I just watched... I've watched Get Shorty recently, the TV series. Was it who's your man from the IT crowd that was in Bridesmaids? Richard Iowardi. No. Oh no, the Irish one. Yeah. Chris O'Dowd. Yes, yeah, shut up. He's like the lead role in the in the T V series remake of the film Get Shorty that John, seen the film. John Travolta was in. Well, I've not seen the film. It's a completely re it's a reimagining of the storyline. And it's fucking amazing. It's got that vibe of breaking bad, except it's funny. So it's it's about mobsters that get into the TV, uh, the film production business. That sounds sick. It, honestly, it's a real blindside. I didn't hear it talked about. It got made about four years ago. There's three series. Get Shorty with Chris O'Dowd. That is, it's it's cool as well. Like there's a bit of menace to it. Like the mur the hitmen, yeah. the murderers. And then within like the first three episodes, they're involved in like Hollywood and they're trying to basically money launder via Hollywood film production. I can and see it's you really fun. Running the car wash that they launder their money through. Yeah. Yeah. Can I do a can can I be an ethnic minority? Yeah. That'd be Norwegian. amazing. Norwegian. The famous immigrant ethnic workforce. minority. What? Norwegian. <laughs> Norway. What 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 country is it in? America. Yeah. So I reckon there's less less Norwegians than anything else. They're not an ethnic minority. Do you, you think fucking idiot? God almighty. <laughs> Some of the misinformation. It's like a fucking Trump tweet. Eh? Hey, oh, uh, lads. Oh. Topical. <laughs> Next question. Um, Next question. Uh, what you got? What you got? What I got? Um, what you got? Ask me anything. Hmm. He takes this seriously, doesn't he? I love it. All right. What's this finger thing? Oh, I sometimes just make me hand walk across tables. Um. <laughs> Let's let's make it a bit uh, funny. All right, Denzel Abraham. <laughs> what a nonsy way to start. Let's thing. make it a bit let's funny. Let's make it a bit funny. <laughs> this is a would you rather. Right would on. you rather have a baby have baby butt smooth balls? Yeah. Or oh, and a hairy cock. Yeah. <whistles> or shiny shiny butt butt cheeks and a hairy asshole. Shiny shiny butt cheeks and a hairy asshole. Oh, so it's basically a reverse pubes. Yeah. But which would you, so, which would you so rather like take? So you're like your arsehole's like hairy or your, your shaft is? It's easier to have a hairy arsehole than a hairy dick. You have a poo How? would be a nightmare, wouldn't it? What? How? Well, I... I, 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 I mean, it's both a fucking nightmare, isn't it? In terms of just cleanliness. 
Yeah, but I'd rather have a hairy arsehole than a hairy dick. Like, your dick being sweaty, no woman's ever going to want to go near a fucking ferret. Yeah. <laughs> it would, I reckon he would. It would look so weird, wouldn't it? Like, yeah. You you'd, basically, you'd have two balls hanging off a fucking hedgehog. Yeah. It would just look like a hairy tuft. Yeah, not into that. I can have, I've already got a bit of a hairy arsehole. I do trim it every now and then. You haven't got a hairy arsehole. What do you mean? Well, you've got a hairy bum. Yeah, the crack. Yes, but it, where does the hair start? In your arsehole? I haven't squatted over in a minute to check, but I, I don't know. Do you not get hairs in your asshole? <laughs> you think you get hairs on your bum? I hate that. <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you ever watch words leave your own mouth? Woo! <laughs> yeah, I go where. Uh, I, I think I'm going to. I'm just going to take the. Yeah. I mean, Laura will not touch my knob at the moment anyway, so it's not going to help if yeah, it looks like, if it looks like Uncle you? fucking. Why won't you touch your knob? Is it Uncle? Not who is it? In the it's it, isn't it? Yeah. Why well, because she... she's pregnant and she wants nothing to do with me, which I respect because she is pretty pregnant. So I'll shut the fuck up. I even you know when I just said that, I wish I could put that back <laughs> in this one. God, she won't touch it. Lazy. Is she being a bit of a fucking knob? <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> she's not. You want me to die today? <laughs> this, this is a public episode, Adam. Y'all gotta be careful. She's being now. a gobshite. Oh my god. <laughs> She's pissing you off. Oh no. Tell the listeners. No, no, it's not. It's totally understandable. Tell you what. I'm just saying my knob being more hairy is not gonna I think help. If Laura's being a pain in the ass, we should tell everyone her phone number and tell them to text her and say, You need to suck Dan off. Good God. <laughs> Let it phone bing, bing, bing. Suck his dick. Suck his dick. Touch his balls. Lick his asshole. Just woo. <laughs> and maybe you'll get in. And she'll be like, I've had 3,000 messages. And do you know what? They're right. Oh, 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 she won't oh. even give me a back scratch. So <laughs> I don't think online abuse is really going to get my nuts sucked. Do you want one more? Yes, please. One more. And just to stop talking about this. <laughs> for such obvious reasons. It's another would you rather. Upset her. Nasty. Uh, my man lives in China. Oh, this have we got a little, a little, uh, little? Is he Chinese? No, his name's Callum. <laughs> Chinese Callum. Shout out to Shanghai Callum. Got a would you rather? Would you rather live somewhere with boss weather, sun every day, <laughs> but you've got to wear proper thick clothes? Yeah. Or live somewhere Baltic like Iceland, but you can only wear shorts and a t-shirt. Love the pod. Keep it up. Shorts and a t-shirt in Iceland. Really? Yeah. I You'd can't. rather be too I, cold than too hot? 100%. Yeah, defo. I've, I've mentioned this before. I sleep with the fucking window open when it's snowing. Do you know what I mean? I have my legs out every day of the year. I'm yeah. a shorts guy. Yeah. It, when gigs came back after that lockdown in the summer and gigs finally came back, for the first few gigs, the, the weather was really nice. I gigged in shorts because I, I really resented putting fucking... Trousers and jeans on. I was like, oh god, just find it really constricting. I, I, I do not get cold on my legs, but I always have a little snoot. I get cold up top. Yeah, so, I do. Yeah. Do you know, like when I used to have me dog, like last winter, I would walk Minnie, the dog, at midnight with a fucking skiing coat on. Like I've got a massive thick North Face coat, and I would walk her with that on and shorts and flip flops, and I'd feel lovely. <laughs> So I was warm up here and my legs are cool. How, it, to, how to look like a cocaine dealer <laughs> who's dipping into the fucking product. Like, don't give a shit, me. <laughs> Walking the fucking dog. I don't feel nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I, what is that? Is that just because your torso, your torso, like if you got trapped in the, if you got trapped in Serengeti. the Andes. Gotta protect not yourself. the Serengeti. It's your, it's your vital organs, isn't it? It, 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 it? The body's amazing, isn't it? Because it right goes, listen, the head, the body, this got these things have got to stay. It it basically starts making critical decisions about who lives and who dies on your body pretty quickly. And Legs, the fingers no. are the first to fucking go. Your hands. Yeah. yeah. Don't need to point. Shut them down. <laughs> when does your dick go? Pretty soon, actually, isn't it? Yeah. Any, as soon as your off. dick's cold, it fucks off inside itself, doesn't it? You end up with another belly button. Yeah. Have you got any, any order out you, Dan? What, dick? <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, no. <laughs> yeah. Middle of winter. Do you know um, what footy dick is? 
<laughs> if we have a game of five aside and your dick just goes to a new sh- size and shape after a game of footy in the cold, footy dick. Yeah. Looks like a newt. It's embarrassing. Speak for yeah. yourself. I just call that dick. I know you get it because you've referenced it before. Yeah, no. In fact, I'm pretty sure you come up with the term footy dick. Yeah. So. Yeah, but I mean, you, you dick. Yeah. <laughs> it is funny, isn't it, how the body does certain things. And when you're doing physical activity and your adrenaline's up and you're like, there's n- no Premier League footballer in history has scored a goal and the body's got so excited. He's turned around like, oh my God, Gerard! And he's turned around with a fucking rod on right in the middle of his little red I shorts. I got told the other day by Danny McLaughlin that Dwight York had a custom-made pocket inside his shorts for his dick because it was that big. I right. got told they like... So they'd sewn in a pocket to like the you leg had to of let, You had to let him mine. What? True. You had to let him mine. All right, cool. Kobe. Ge- genuinely. <laughs> like they had a little a little thing and he'd slide his dick in there so it'd stay there for the whole game. So he had a dick pocket yeah. in his Man United shorts. <laughs> yeah. And you went, yeah, that sounds believable. It, Danny told me. Danny. Oh, Danny's never bullshitted anyone, has he? <laughs> Have Danny's you never, have you, ne- to Dwight York, have you never watched Danny McLaughlin's comedy that is seventy percent just made up? I fucking love it. Like as if you're like, but Danny told me. Why would Danny ever lie? I, I, yeah, but you've never seen a, a, anyone get an erection. But it also does work the other way that it's fight or flight, isn't it? For your dick, you're playing Premier League football. All right, on the battlefield, like back Ooh. in the day. Would you rather when lose the your adrenaline dick? fucking kicks in? Would you rather use your Lose your dick or one of your limbs? Oh, oh that's right. a fucking hell of a question. Where's that come from, mate? Just off the top of me, fucking head. Which one do you want? Take any of these limbs. I'll be alright. Your right leg. I'll take what my right leg. Yeah, you can fucking have it, <laughs> and I'll be right there next to Adam Hills and Josh Widdicombe as the new <laughs> member of the last leg. Hey, right, lads, <laughs> how did you lose that in a pretty brutal? Would you rather? <laughs> but they're not having a dick. Really? Oh, fuck. Of course, you... mate. You lose your dick, you're out of the game. Out of what game? The shagging game. Footy. The touching game. Yeah, but you've already got two kids. Do you really need your dick as much as you need your leg now? (sighs) Imagine how hard it would have been for you to get here today with no dick. Now imagine how much harder it would have been with one leg. Yeah. You can't change gears with one leg. Do you get a a blue badge? Hang on. Do you get a blue badge for not having a dick? Defo. Is that a disability? Being a woman. No, no. I mean, if you actually lose your dick in a... <laughs> that was fire. In a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's, it's almost like we're all thinking of ways to piss my wife off. <laughs> <laughs> He's nervous. His palms are sweaty. You know, Knees weak, arms are heavy. You know, in the Patreon episodes, I'm like, great banter, guys. Knowing this is a public, I'm like, good. It's me on the wife's knee. Um... Seriously though, if you lish, if you lost your dick in a, in a like an industrial lathe yeah. accident, you haven't got the ability to come anymore or have an erection, so no. that is a disability. What? <laughs> Hang on, just because you're not able to do something doesn't may, mean you're disabled. It like, does. If you can't concentrate, it's you, I don't have the ability to follow this conversation. I'm disabled. It is a disability. ADHD is a disability. It's not blue badge though, is it? No, because like it doesn't affect your parking. Yeah, also, you'd not be able to fill in the fucking form. <laughs> Adam, would you lose a dick or a limb? Kobe. What? Dick or limb? If I could just, if I could pick the limb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can. If I lose my left arm, then yeah. But I want both my legs and I want my right. Why? Because I need them. For what? Everything. What? Oh, okay. Also, when I popped my shoulder out and I had like the first time, I had like two weeks where I, I only had one. Oh. It's really, you know, like, it's hard to get a shower with only one arm. Yeah, it's hard to get a girlfriend with no dick. <laughs> yeah, I'd lose my left arm. Just rubbing Then your... again, this is my bad arm now. God, he's taking this one seriously. Yeah, I like it. I'd lose one of my arms, but I'd have to think about which one. Yeah, but I need my legs, man. Do you need your dick? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I think, I think it's crucial. I'd rather have... When you've got four of anything and you've got one of another thing... Just really consider what we're doing there, you know? No, you haven't got four of everything, have you? You've got, got two, two of them, two yeah. of them. They are different. But, the, you know, I'm not trying to... T- if you've lost a limb, we're not trying to take it lightly. No, of course not. Christ. But they've got amazing prosthetics, and you get a bit of fucking help from Rishi Sunak, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I. but if I had to... Cho- if I was losing one of my legs or my dick, I think I'm losing my dick, you know? You're not. 
I am. No, you're not. Yeah, I am. I love footy. I know. I'm serious. I, I love footy too much. I'm walking. I do it all the time. You love footy so much that you're willing to not have kids. No, you can adopt. No, I, I make sure you have the kids before. Do what you have a kick then. Oh right, there's a technical. You can adopt as well, or yeah. kidnap. Could you imagine? <laughs> could you imagine knocking on knocking on? <laughs> you see a really cute one, and you're like, Pfft. yeah, yeah. You're going to be a great parent one day. <laughs> I don't know whose kid you're going to be a parent to, but you're going to be a great dad. I said before, if you could pick, you get a Chinese baby, wouldn't you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Like if you could pick, yeah. they are the cutest babies. Yeah. Like Asian babies, like Oriental babies are the cutest babies. Oriental. In the world. Is that not? Is that not okay anymore? No. Really? Uh, is that not like? No, it's I the think... word to differentiate like South Asians and East Asians. East Asians. That's what I should have said, isn't it? There you go. Or just the nationality. No, but you know what I mean. <sighs> I don't. <laughs> You do? I yes, you do. Clue what you're do you want me to release our WhatsApp conversations? Do you want me to? We don't don't talk fucking throw me under the bus, cunt. We don't you know what WhatsApp. I meant. You uh, all we, know well, what I meant. Yeah, I know. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's, I, th- I don't think Orientals, I don't think it's current parlance, is it? I don't know. I, don't, I honestly I, didn't know. Yeah. Well, well we're, we're learning. We're telling you. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, back if to you, the darkies. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> but if you could choose, yeah. Do you know oh, why jokes, you think mate. they're cute? It's jokes. Because Asian people don't use prams. Because right. of the de- like the dense uh, population, mm-hmm. so all Asian babies walk from like early ages, so they look they're cute like toddling. Yeah. Whereas English kids are all little pricks in the prams and that, but it causes them to have really bad limps when they get older. That's why you always see little Asian ladies struggling when they get older because they've been walking for fucking eighty years. So is he gimps back? There's been some incredible information <laughs> made up and passed on today. That's true. <laughs> that sounded. Mental. <laughs> there's no. Pro- yeah, yeah. There's no space in Asia, so uh, they have a baby. Two months later, they're like, "Come on, come on, little Jackie, get fucking walking." No, Dan, do you know if you you're take- doing karate by four months? Do you know if you take Etta to like Asda? Yeah. Do you put her in a pram? No, she's not been in a pram for ages. <coughs> no, I mean, well, when she now. was of pram age. Yeah, when she couldn't walk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, she didn't go in a pram just because we've got loads of space in the UK. <laughs> no. She's like, Daddy, Daddy, I want to walk. I was like, fuck off, love. But you've seen we live Japanese... in the suburbs. It's spacious. You can get a pram on a train here, can't you? You can in Japan. Right, so what happens? What do you mean? With babies that can't so walk? They, they, when they're not a able poos. to walk, they have to, the man usually has the... Is it, is it? Papoose. Papoose. They all wear them, and then when they can walk, they walk. Yeah. I mean, it's not oh, massively dissimilar, but I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Like, I haven't, I didn't Some see kids don't want to be in a pram as soon as they can walk. They're fucking yeah. toddling and making themselves 90% more <laughs> dangerous. That's what my daughter looked like. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, regret the joke about the old, I uh, dropped the D-bomb, and I, I wish I could have put that one back D-bomb? in. D-bomb? I was just trying to be funny, and now it's I dark is. Oh, well, now we're both <laughs> fucked. Great. At least we're both fucked. <laughs> I was just trying to be funny, and I regret it. Woo! <laughs> Well, I'm going to go for a cheese and ham toasty. I want a, I want a little nibble. Let's go, babe. So we're going to have a nibble. Back in a minute. Today's guest is the wonderful Lauren Patterson. It's going to be a belter. Stay tuned. And first, she's a word great. from our sponsors. She's been walking since she's seven. <laughs> What's happening, guys? Do us a favor. Only take you two seconds. Leave a like on this video. Go and subscribe to our channel and ring the bell if you haven't done that already. A little comment. All these things help us with the YouTube algorithms. We'd be very, very grateful. It'll take you two seconds. Got to do it now. And then we'll get back to the pod. Go ahead. Welcome back. We are back here. 97.4. Twat <laughs> FM. It's Twat FM. Uh, we've got Lauren Patterson in the building. Uh, how are you? Socially distanced. Hello. Also. Socially distanced, of course. Obviously, We've covered it, compliant. And it's exactly 12 metres. Measured it with Adam's dick. <laughs> yeah. It took three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> He's unfurling. He's unfurling. Uh, oh, good journey. little trundle wheels at school where it just clicks every... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's what half a click in. 
Uh, first day out of self isolation. Yeah, and we're in lockdown. So were you isolating because you had it, or because you knew someone who had it? I or? Knew someone who had it. Yeah, yeah, I got tracked and traced. Oh, Jesus! Yeah. How did you get tracked and traced? Because my sister and she gave me fucking phone number. The ah! crass. You didn't get tracked and traced. You got fucking dobbed in. <laughs> Have you had a test? No, I've been off work for two weeks. So you just fucked. You were like, ah. I had no symptoms. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have you been like you know when you've been to restaurants and that have you been like signing in? <laughs> the weirdest thing happened to me. Went to the Morrison's Cafe with my daughter, and the and woman you were was served like, by me. "Can you yeah? <laughs> can you in Chester?" And she was like, "Can you fill in the form, please?" And it all it was all it wasn't the classic Morrison's in it. We got a pen and a paper, mm-hmm. pass it round, touch the pen, right? You crack and trace. God forbid we get COVID, and I I'm sort of used to just being a bit of a knob with the track and trace because in my head. I don't want to be tracked or traced Mm -hmm. and then told I can't work. It's all for fuck all now anyway, because of the lockdown. So I took the pen and then I went, I'm not, I'm not signing my name here. (laughs) And it was the most amazing, like randomizer from my past. I wrote Dave Ingram. Dave Ingram is a guy I started comedy with in 2003, 2004. He quit stand up about three years later, four years later, haven't seen him for 10 years, and for some reason went, yep, that's the Met name, and it just came out of nowhere. I didn't put his fucking full address down. That'd be a bit of a cunt move. (laughs) I haven't seen you for 10 years. Enjoy your two weeks off. I mean, if you knew his full address at this point, that'd be a bit fucking weird. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) But it was the weirdest thing. So I have been... Oh, shit. Is this public? Oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? I've been doing my best to help (laughs) curb this virus. I haven't. Apart from in Morrison's. Everywhere I go, I put it. I I just make sure I write eleven numbers down, and it starts with 07. Right? Did you just start doing a little randomizer? Oh seven three two five four one seven eight three seven. Should, should we try and ring that number now? <laughs> You're on ninety seven point four Twat FM. Oh, you've just been fucking isolated. <laughs> like I get it. Like if if Carl got a positive test, or you did, or me dad, or some if Lauren got one tomorrow now that she's been in. I'd be like, do you know what? I'll either get a test or I'll isolate or whatever. But if I'm in a Weatherspoons mm-hmm. and someone in the on the other side of the room who I've been nowhere near gets a cold, I, I'm just not. I'm not staying in for two weeks because fucking Barry on the other side of the room's got COVID. I'm just not doing it. No, that's that's what all comedians fear, isn't it? We've not yeah. worked much this year, and then all of a sudden someone's telling me like, if someone sneezes loudly. <laughs> In a fucking co-op, and you were there, but you're out like, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah, well, that's the thing, I was booting off, because I was meant to be at Frog and Bucket this weekend in Manchester, so I was kicking off, and I was like, she owes us a week's holiday pay, and she owes us two gigs, and then I found out we're going into lockdown, and I can't do them anyway, and I was like, all right, fair play. (laughs) Maybe I overreacted, I We thought you weren't going to make it today. I know. We we thought we weren't going to be blessed with you might be the first guest to get here definitely from the distance you've done but on a train as well what an absolute so, fucking champ what a treat to be on a train though because it's now like literally illegal for people to sit next to you oh yeah how nice that, <sighs> i've that got is... no fear because if someone tries to come sit next to us now it's attempted murder <laughs> i love it how you jumped up isn't it funny how people use covid rules like honestly i can't believe my sister dobbed me in fuck her i've lost two gigs but when it suits me murder it back the fuck up you're trying to stab me with your covid eyes i love it Attempted good on you me. Do you use reckon, it do you reckon if you had co if i had covid i mean you were having an argument and i coughed in your face it's illegal is it attempted murder though? No, <laughs> no. I think you might get. I think you get. What do you get? It's not. Is it assault now? Is it classed as assault? It's, or if you died, it'd be like secondary manslaughter. It happened with some some woman caught AIDS off her boyfriend. Cause she, okay. Uh, her boyfriend was cheating with men. He got AIDS, gave it to her. She found out, and to get back at men, slept with like ten men. Right. And give them all AIDS, and she got done for. What to get back at men? So can you yeah. tell that story again? <laughs> <laughs> Some lady got AIDS. She got back at men. Hi, like, like, like spreading AIDS. Yeah, like fuck men. Like men have ruined my life. My husband's cheated on me, whoever he was. So she slept with men. Uh, no one she had AIDS and didn't tell them. Uh, and what's your perspective on that? <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, that's why we've got you in. De- defend yourself. Thanks for getting that in, Carl. It was a bit crowbarred, but you did well. Yeah. So, Lauren. Um, I mean, feminism does miss the mark sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs> 
<laughs> these fucking we feminists. We need to, look, they stopped us voting for years and they're really, really bad people. Let's give them all aid. So it's, it's a hell of a comeback, isn't it? That's um, also, since I've met my wife, I've realised that women, <laughs> this is stupid because you should know this anyway, but the relationship women have with people sitting next to them on trains is different from me. For me, it's just like, ah, oh, I just want to put my fucking, you know, my phone there and just spread out a little bit. And Laura, when I met her, was like, yeah, I don't really like trains. She was like, I was like, why? Just because you like the space? She was like, no, because I just think I might fall asleep and someone will put the balls in my mouth. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. What fucking trains. That's a northern real life. Yeah. <laughs> that was in her head why she didn't want anyone sitting up next to her. Why I can't sleep on trains because I might get teabagged in my fucking sleep. <laughs> Did she actually say that? She, she had this weird fear of being on her own on a train on a long journey. When we met, I did Edinburgh that year. And I was like, you could just get the train up. She went, oh, five hours. I'm not. I'll fall asleep and someone will teabag me. <laughs> and then I, I laughed and went, <laughs> and she was like, no, it's serious. It does happen. I'm like, not often though. <laughs> Have you had any weirdness on a train? No, I don't think so. You just don't want, you You've just never don't want been teabagged on a train. Oh, uh, caveat, against your will. <laughs> <laughs> I've been single for a long time now. <laughs> Tickets. <laughs> 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 I think because I'm small though I don't take up much space so people then think my space is by default their space so right. I end up sometimes like literally like a little T-Rex in the corner and I'm not a fan of that right well when you'll sit on the window seat like and you'll get a man seats. spreading twat who just comes thing is it's not even men sometimes it's women with all their shopping and I'm like alright I get it you've been to Boots calm down like <laughs> someone had some points <laughs> <laughs> just fucking spread out oh. Hello there. I just remember in all the train journeys when you just like you sit in and you're like, oh, it's quiet, and then you just get one stop down the line and a f fucking family of fuckwits <laughs> turn up and just surround. Hey, yeah, there's a space next to him. Kids, they are. You, Darren, you sit there, and you're like, I don't want to sit next to Darren. Yeah. One of my favourite things that ever happened on a train, and I never spoke about this on stage or anything, because when I started stand up. 90% of my stories were like bus stories. Like I was on a bus and I heard these two girls talking. Well, can I just stop you? One of my favourite bits when you started out in stand-up, you were like, I, I love, you got into a joke by going, it's brilliant being a comedian, you get to travel everywhere. So I was doing this gig in town and it always made me fucking <laughs> laugh. Like, oh yeah, I just love, you get to gig everywhere all around the country. So I was uh, on the bus going into town. I was like, Beautifully done. <laughs> yeah, I'm an international comedian. Anyway, I was on the 193. <laughs> I had so many of them and it become a thing. Like if I posted the Facebook status and all the fucking the Scouse comedian started the big banter off. It would always, and I was just like, I'm going to stop doing that. So I, this was only a few years ago, maybe like three or four. I was on a train and there was a, this old couple. Like they, he, they, she must have been in his seventies and he was at least, they, they looked like the six, late sixties, early seventies. And uh, they sat there and this woman got on and she had three kids with her and she booked the table that they were sat on for her and her three kids. Single mum, struggling like fuck, loads of bags and stuff. And uh, she went, I'm really sorry, this is our table. And uh, he goes, well, I, I, I'm i afraid there's no other seat for me and my wife, so uh, we're going to stay here, but thank you. <laughs> and he just looked, and she went, wow, I've booked, a, I've booked a seat. And I was about to go, lad, you've got to fucking move. She's booked the thing. And a fella got up, picked him up, sat him down on the other seat that was empty. And went, tell your wife to go and sit over there, you fucking horrible cunt. <laughs> Some scouts lad. This was this was on a train from Liverpool. Going to you know those horrible long trains from Liverpool, the London Midland one? So oh, not the Virgin yeah. one, like the yeah. five hour. Yeah, stops. you get it for seven pound fifty the day before. I've and you're done like, that before and been like, this is cheap. There <laughs> must be a catch. And then I get on it and I'm like, oh, there is a catch. I've travelled back in time. Yeah. In Leighton <laughs> Buzzard, which yeah. definitely doesn't exist. Uh, the next stop is Leighton Buzzard. The next stop after that is 1989. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's yeah. awful. He picked this old man up and shoved him down and said, tell your wife to go and sit over there. She's booked it. Oh, God. I thought you meant he picked the couple up. How no. big is this fucking guy? <laughs> All right, you two. Fuck up. <laughs> I'd love to have been. I'd, uh, that deserves a clap. Obviously, what I would have done is just sit there going, <laughs> do nothing, because I'm an absolute fucking wuss. See, but it's amazing hero work. Like. There's people listening to this, though, who are proper nonsense. Like, well, what? So he assaulted an old man. Oh, yeah, very, very brave. Very brave assaulting an old man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know what you mean, but I'm on. 
Do you think I'm not? T- I'm I'm totally on his side. Yeah, I know you are. Oh right, yeah, all right. Yeah. No, I wasn't going to go at you. I thought you were going to hold hands there across the table. That was we are. We like hardly doing, ever doing a touch. deal on theme park. Every now and then, we our fingers touching. You know, like <laughs> you know, like in a movie uh-huh. when um like the couple their hands touch for the first time and it's like oh it's the moment it's the exact opposite of that <laughs> like the exact opposite though it's repulsive and I sort of regret being his business partner for like three seconds. How long did you hold my hand for? I honestly don't think I had to do it for more than two seconds. Proper, like, like proper I'm getting anxiety in me and proper instru- just let's see it. Let's just see if we can do it. Lauren, how long you do you think? You've been so tense. Come here, come no, here. I, like, Go on. Like, like we're a couple, proper, proper straight. Come on, you can. How homophobic are you? Hold come on. Hold the man's hand, Adam. I'd honestly rather hold a gay man's dick. <laughs> it's not homophobia. I'd rather suck a man off. It feels creepy. Right, oh. ready? Right, Carl, bring him in. Ready, 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 ready. <laughs> it was horrible. Really? Oh, lad, it's uh, it's not men. It's him. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Um, uh, it just feels weird. There's just something. Um, you mentioned Morrison's when I mentioned Morrison's. You, I've uh, in the lockdown when it first happened. Yeah. There was a few comics that went right. Fuck this. I'm doing <laughs> something. And then there was we absolutely started hammering the podcast to the point where we all had a little like breakdown on Zoom. Yeah. Other other comics just went, I'm going into hibernation. And then like Shanna's work for Sainsbury's mm-hmm. delivering and Jamie Sutherland's delivering for Tesco. And you because I you you were quite like you almost documented it, didn't you? Yeah. On social media or anything. Yeah, you got a job at Morrison's. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? Did you just go, fuck it, I'm doing it? Or was it through necessity? Or? Well, we had a whole pandemic hit and then I got dumped and I was like, this is a true shit storm of a year. I got dumped on April Fool's Day, right, over the phone and I didn't believe I was being dumped because it was <laughs> April Fool's Day. <laughs> oh. And they used, have, did you meet him? You've definitely met I, him. I, I met him. Yeah, I've met him. Say, I think you've both met him. So obviously we like, we obviously got on dead well. We were a fucking couple and we had the same kind of sense of humour. So when the phone rang on April Fool's Day, there was a brief moment where I thought I was going to be proposed to, which is, <laughs> oh! which is so tragic now you think oh, about oh it. Oh my God. I was like, oh my God. Because I'd always said, if he proposed to us, I wanted it to be something to do with comedy. So either proposing at a gig or like at a festival. And I was like, oh my God, April Fool's Day, what a day to propose to a comedian. And he gives us this really like big, big, far too detailed speech about how he didn't love us anymore. And I was like, he is really committed to this April Fool's. Like, what? I almost believe that he doesn't like us anymore. And I let him get right to the end of it. And I went, it's after 12, mate. You're the fool. And he was like, what are you on about? <laughs> and I was like, it's after oh 12. Heart. I went, I don't believe you. And he was like, no, Lauren, I'm being serious. And I was like, I don't buy it. And he was like, well, it's... <laughs> And then by April 6th, you were like, he's really committing to this yeah. bit. <laughs> and Holy then I was like, shit. oh, I genuinely thought, he'll sleep on it. He'll sleep on it and it'll be, he'll realise his prank backfire. And then he was like, so how are you going to get your stuff back from London? And I was like, good question. (laughs) Very good question. I thought, you know what? I'm going to be miserable if I don't get a job. So I went and got a job at Morrison's and turns out still miserable. (laughs) <laughs> okay let's just I love the, it out that hot I've got I'm so heartbroken to Morrison yeah. <laughs> there's so many things there's so there's just there's so many things uh-huh. so did you live with him in London yeah for two years right uh-huh so right so did he so was it yours and his or was it his and you lived there we both rented together. Right. Like, yeah. But he still had the fucking audacity to be like, how are you going to get your stuff because out of my I'd house? I'd moved out before the panda. He'd gone back to his mum's and I'd gone back to Newcastle. So I'd sent all my stuff to his mum's house thinking I was coming back to London in a couple of months' time. Um, but obviously, like, no removals could happen. So I was doing Richard Heron's podcast in my bedroom in June while a removal van just pulled up outside my house with all my life's possessions. So I'd, like, finished this podcast, and I was like, man, isn't it good to feel like a comedian again? I was so funny on that podcast, and I came downstairs, and my mum was like, surprise, all your shit's here. And I was like, oh. <laughs> he paid a removal van. to. He paid half a removal van, and oh, good I guy. got invoiced for the other half. <laughs> oh, great guy. What Do you know what? I'll he was say. always a gobshite. <laughs> <laughs> like, he was, though. Like, I met him a few times, and I was always like, there's something fucking wrong with this gun. <laughs> I said, to be honest, I said, 
what, what we're going to do about paying for this removal van? Because, you know, working class girl, I do like to pay me way. But also I was like, I shouldn't have to pay it. And I was like, I suppose we could pay half. And he went for it. And I was like, mm, that wasn't the right option. <laughs> um, and I was like, right, so if you're going to charge us half invoices and I'll write it off as a tax expense. And he did invoices so now on my fucking tax spreadsheet i've had to be like break up removal van <laughs> <laughs> but at least you put two kisses on the invoice no. imagine trying to explain that i mean accountant in a year's time i'll be like right, as if i've got an accountant <laughs> <laughs> it's me it's just gonna be me looking in the mirror in april going well lauren you fucked up a lot in 2020 <laughs> amazing oh. what a bell sniff yeah. if you're gonna like move some your ex's stuff back to them don't mm-hmm. be like i need half the money do you know what i'm more sad about though and i think this says a lot about my priorities because we live together he had the ps4 and i bought the sims for the ps4 and i'm really sad about my sims oh he's got your save he's got the game he's got the game they're gonna be dead in the pool aren't they they're done this, them, them stairs are long gone. God, it's like having kids, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and I'd built me and him. Get joint custody of the Sims. Exactly. Want me Sims back. As someone who's recently gone through a, a similar but not exactly the same thing, mm-hmm. I want to say I reckon it's harder to have a dog in a breakup oh, than yeah. kids. You think it's harder to have a dog <laughs> over ki- having kids on every possible <laughs> life. No, no, having a dog is it's the same emotionally. It's more difficult in a lot of ways because your kid doesn't shit on the neighbor's garden or shouldn't. And I think if a dog dies, that's sort of worse than with a kid because if a kid dies, you can actually say goodbye and the dog's just whimpering. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> you can't take a kid to the doctors and get it put down. So when a kid dies, you don't feel guilty. Adam, these things don't always land. <laughs> what happened to the dog? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking prick. I'm sick of hearing this stuff about dogs. Every time I go, being a dad's kind of difficult. It's like, ah, shut up. I have six. But having my mini is very difficult <laughs> because she needs walking twice a day sometimes. Listen, I've just laughed at Farth House and it stings. <laughs> oh, so, oh. so just get ready for that. Put oh, uh, yeah. in an enclosed space. Oh. Um, right. Here's the thing. I, I do lean into that, and it is a joke half the time, but I do think breakup-wise, do you know what I mean? I can't ask, because I let her take the dog. Because, oh, that's big. Right? Yeah, I, I would have like, gone full custody battle. Yeah, you well, got I a court for things like that. <laughs> well, there should be a court for things like that, shouldn't there? <laughs> but also... <laughs> this has worked out really well. I'm not dealing with COVID and your buff. <laughs> I don't need to. I don't need to deal with a pandemic and the smell of your arsehole. Accept it. Ah! Ah! Come on. Oh no. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's marinating. Tom, Tom the intern, burn that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, kid. First job. But if Laura fucked off, she's still got to let you see Etta. I'm not allowed to see Minnie. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean. It's a nightmare. You should be able to like yeah. be like, no, I get the dog. Yeah. On you know Tuesday weekend and half term. <laughs> you know yeah. if if Laura did that and then withheld custody, I couldn't go to a pound and spend twenty quid and adopt another child. You literally can. Um, it's I just think it's as more, easy to adopt kids as it is dogs. Uh, you it's don't not. even need a six foot fence for the kids. I think yeah. as these videos are on YouTube and I get called a nonce twice a week, <laughs> I don't think I was we're adopting. Say, just take one from the park. There's loads. <laughs> Oh my God, that's the second child abduction joke A joke in two sections. <laughs> no wonder we're all mates. You've fucking got the same mental illness. Yeah. Just steal one, the three. Lola, yeah. if you could adopt, mm-hmm. right, a child. Yeah. I just want to say, if she agrees with me, right, of any ethnicity, uh-huh. what would you go for? Asian. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Hey, now that you're two single, both of you are single, stay the fuck away from each other because you'd be an evil couple. Well, yeah, stay like, the fuck away from mine and Adam's new half English, half Asian family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't okay, believe no. that way. <laughs> oh, uh, my I God. I said in the first half, so you know the first half just me and him? Yeah. I said that, like, obviously, Asians make the cutest babies. Yeah. They absolutely do. See, I'm not fucking mental. You will, you're you will mental. both no, make. No, I agree with you. You will both. <laughs> you'll both make beautiful parents of abducted <laughs> foreign <stolen> children. Child. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, I oh, can't wait to see Weird it. Von Trapp family. <laughs> yeah, we don't put our kids on Facebook, you know, because you know we don't want them to be traced. <laughs> <laughs> 
Morrison's for the best, isn't it? Oh, right. What were we talking about? Morrison's. <laughs> No, but you can adopt a kid. Track, track and trace. Just as easy as you Track can and adopt. trace on stolen Chinese children. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not signing these forms. Why? Because of COVID. No, because of little Vinny. <laughs> Vinny Chan. Played it safe with the name there, didn't you? <laughs> I'll go with Vinny. <laughs> I thought about it. <laughs> but I knew that if I picked a name, it would just be slightly Chinesey sounds. <laughs> oh my I end up calling it a fucking Chinese dish. Oh god. Uh, okay. So you're working in Morrison's at the minute. Um living the high life. How's it going? It's all right, but right, I don't like to play it to Northern stereotypes, working class stereotypes. I've been moved from the checkouts, and I think it's because I didn't know what a lot of vegetables were. What? When no, when they're coming like towards you on the conveyor belt. <laughs> which which ones? I love it. Loads of them. How Jordy's that? What the fuck is a carrot? <laughs> <laughs> What's this big long fucking dildo looking bastard? <laughs> well, how's this for day one? I had a moolie. What the fuck's a moolie? What is a is moolie? this in Newcastle upon Tyne? Uh -huh. I used to live in Newcastle at the time, and the fact that that vegetable is available yeah, in Newcastle in a rough bit of Newcastle, that as city well. has changed. That was dip, Mooley. Look at that. How do you spell it? M O O L I. Is this Morrison's or a Waitrose? I just thought it was a big white carrot. Oh, a, a radish. Why don't they just call it a radish then? A daikon. Yeah, that's a radish. Mooley. It's a type of radish. Go on. A mooley. There was another one. Courgettes I got stuck on. All right. <laughs> I just thought they were like baby aubergines. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I honestly, a button for them. I think that's not. I think this is all fuck ups that I'd make. <laughs> I can't imagine that fucking Barbara. Which bit of Newcastle is this? <laughs> Are you telling me that fucking Carol that's worked there for twenty years? I fucking sick of the seeing moolies, Lake. <laughs> I was raised on fucking moolies. <laughs> <Mooleys. laughs> what? As if they know what they're on about. Fucking courgette, you Tory. <laughs> So you've been moved from the checkout? Yeah. Where, where have they got you? In the cafe with me mum. We're going to kill each other. Does she work? Yeah, she got us working class nepotism. I was like, ma, uh, you know how I'm always whinging in comedy that, that, that is... middle class people get opportunities they don't deserve because they know the right people. Well, it's my time to shine. <laughs> don't worry, Lauren Love. I know some people. Yeah, I'll get you in. That I is know. such... Like, you know how I say, like, Liverpool and Newcastle are very similar cities. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Oh, definitely. That is such a scouse thing to end up working in the same Morrison's cafe as your ma. Yeah. Yeah. When and things me, go to shit. You can always go to Morrison's. You can go Me and, and another girl work in the cafe and I went to school with this girl and her mum also works there and we've got this same kind of like proper screechy Geordie voice. So if we're both on shift together and both our mums are in, all you'll hear is, ma, 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 <laughs> like two little seagulls. <laughs> And put on my mum and her, because her mum's on the checkout, my mum's in the cafe, and the two of them are just like, why did we get our daughter's jobs here? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. You're going to be sat there with your daughter one day, going, you're going to join the family business. <laughs> my sister used to work there as well, you know. <laughs> my sister worked there, like, at first job when she was a teenager. My mum's worked there for 15 years. My dad's just been made redundant. My mum was like, well, you can always join the family business. Jesus. And I was like, we don't own it. <laughs> Come from a long line of people who served cold fried eggs, <laughs> and you're oh. you're represented by one of the biggest comedy agents in the <laughs> world. Uh, my mum works at Morrison's. I, I work, work at Morrison's. Morrison. Obviously, I'm represented by Avalon, yeah. but but they they take fifteen percent. Someone, I'm having drama with fried eggs. Someone complained <laughs> about me fried eggs because they said they were too overdone. And I was like, wait, right, whatever, I'll cook them less. And then people started sending them back because they weren't cooked enough. And I was like, well, cook your own fucking eggs. And people were like, that's kind of why they come to Morrison, so they don't have to do that. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to last long. I'm yet. an artist. <laughs> These eggs aren't cooked enough. You'll need to speak to my agent. <laughs> <laughs> Mother! <laughs> But, like, I think as well with being, like, comedians, you're used to if someone gives you shit, you just give it back, don't you? Just call like, them a cunt on Twitter. Right, yeah. pretty much. Like, can I get to do that in Morrison's? Learn that the hard way. <laughs> but, like, some wife brought a breakfast back the other day and was like, it looks like that, because I was doing, like, the plating up. She brought it back to the girl on the till and was like, it looks like the girl's just thrown it on the plate. And I was like, well, I have. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I'm busy. Of course, I just you've paid four pound for it. What do you want us to arrange it in the shape of a fucking labia? 
<laughs> I don't know why that a, was the first thing. A labia thing breakfast? That came to my mind. Uh, which breakfast do you want? The little breakfast, the big breakfast, or the twat breakfast? <laughs> The Labour Minor, the Labour Majora. <laughs> are you it's hoping to stay on the cafe or are you hoping to get back to the tills? What, what In your Morrison's mm. career, is there a certain bit you want to work I'd on? I'd like to head for the exit as soon as... Fair How long enough. have you got, do you think, before you just like pop well, and quite throw an op- egg quite at someone? optimistic. And then when they said that furlough was getting extended to March, I was like, we're all fucked, aren't we? We're going to be locked down forever. It was a weird one when they announced that. Like, There's going to be help for the self-employed. And you're like... Oh, that's a mate. Oh, that could be great. That could be brilliant. It's gonna maybe go till March. Like, no, <laughs> take the money. I don't want the money. I just want to be able just to do comedy. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, it's a kicker. We've got a. You don't. You don't want to feel too negative. But I've spoken to a couple of comics recently, and they're like, it's just as long as we get to gig in December, and I feel like going. Cool. Stay positive. Yeah. But just mentally prepare, prepare yourself that that might not be fucking happening <laughs> in December. There's an element it, of that. I do think it is going to happen in December. <laughs> Key. I think we're coming back in December because they want something they, to blame. They want they want Christmas because they want to be able to go. We gave you Christmas for fuck's sake. Vote us back in. <laughs> I think they're going to give us Christmas. Tom's nodding. See, he agrees with me on everything. Tom. I, yeah. <laughs> Tom, it's a great way to get this job, Tom. <laughs> I think they're going to give us back Christmas and I don't think they're going to give us back Christmas gigs. I've got this I've oh, got this horrible feeling that, you know, out of the first lockdown, when it all went up the gears mm-hmm. and it fe- very much felt like comedy, the only thing getting shat on more than comedy was like soft play in nightclubs. Yeah. And I'm worried that that's going to be the case again. Obviously, you can go and see your family and friends. What about venues? No, they're fucked. They're no, I think forever. we're coming back. I think most places are going to be in tier one in December. And I think the end of December, there's going to be a fucking massive spike. And January is going to be the worst it's been at any point. Mm-hmm. And I'm gutted about that because that's where my birthday is. Oh, well, see, mine's the 4th of December. So I'm like, we better oh. get this lock. Oh, that was a that was He a held it back. It's horrible. Sorry, love. <laughs> <laughs> if we get out of lockdown on the 2nd of December, I'll be very happy because then I get to have a birthday. When's your birthday? 4th. The fourth. I optimistically booked the weekend off work way back in April because I was like, we won't still be in lockdown. And now I'm like, oh. Yeah. Oh. What are you going to do? How old are you going to be? 27. Oh, big one. Yeah. What are you going to do? Probably die and join the 27 club. I feel that would be very on brand for me. <laughs> <laughs> while, while working at the Morrison's Cafe. Yeah. <laughs> Just like Hendrix. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's brutal, isn't it? I asked, I asked the other day, I was like, what are you doing for Halloween? And you're like, oh yeah, I f- forgot. No one's doing anything. Yeah. Apart from setting off all the fireworks, all the fireworks. that have oh, ever God. been created, how was how like the video you put up on Twitter, Carl? Was it was that for five hours? Oh, God, like like not like oh, there's a, a display, permanent fireworks for five hours. It did sound like you're in Beirut. Yeah, <laughs> I love bonfire night, me. Yeah, yeah, I hate fireworks every other night of the year, but mm-hmm. bonfire nights, I feel yeah. No, I yeah, I enjoy bonfire night, but it was it was extra, wasn't it? Yeah. This bonfire night, people are like, well, I can't go anywhere. I've got to do fuck all. We're not going anywhere for a month. So they basically got like the arms of like a, a small <laughs> Arab state and let them off in their small in the garden. Gardens. Yeah. I do don't know why anyone would have spent m- money. <laughs> if you just walked outside and looked up or slightly to the side, yeah. you had a Everywhere. free display, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, but that's not the same as having, especially if you've got kids, having your own fireworks. Or a dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, yeah. We're surrounded by dogs. So I, like me and my neighbor Neil were like, are we going to do something? And it's just, it's eggy, isn't it? Because you're like, oh, I've got dogs here dogs there we get on really well with our neighbors so we just left it and then the house two doors down went nah fuck it <laughs> we're gonna get everything and it was immense and it was for free do you think it's weird that we celebrate bonfire night because of what it is it because uh guy forks he tried to blow up the house apartment that's why we do it in it yes i think that was the history of it isn't it yeah but like isn't that weird we don't like it. there's no other terrorist attacks that we have a party for remember remember <laughs> seven seven exactly <laughs> We don't have a fucking... You don't get clowns around on 9-11, It didn't happen, did it? I think they're celebrating the fact that it was foiled. Yeah. They're not celebrating mm. the fact that it happened. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It, they, 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 <laughs> Sorry, they, lad. He's <laughs> 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 like, I'm on that episode of Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Richard Osman over there. Well, actually, <laughs> man, 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 man. I'm right again. And then they were hung, drawn, and quartered, weren't they? Yeah. Nice. Is really cool. quartered mean you get cut into four? Did you get your limbs chopped off? Ooh. You're hung until you're nearly yeah. dead. 
Someone drawn on a yeah some yeah <laughs> yeah is that, that where hangman comes from talk me through what you think hung, hung drawn and quartered is hang them oh hang them <laughs> <laughs> no come on come on barry more fucking neck <laughs> always barry also go on te- like so quartered is you cut their arms and legs off but that cuts you into five because you've still got your body um so that's not quartered i think the four chops of your limbs and then they get you. They they uh, uh, are we doing this? They get you in. They get all your organs out and show them to you as you're dying. And that, I, I feel like you're already dead at that point. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I um, don't think you could be there with no arms and no legs and your fucking lungs out having a look going <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> yeah. are, you, are you sorry now? <laughs> all right, we'll pop them back in. He said he's sorry. Carol, get the sewing, get the sewing kit. Yeah. Oh. It is a weird one to celebrate. It's so long ago. Like any of those lids last night were like, fuck you, Guy Fox. <laughs> <laughs> I love Parliament, me. Go on, Bojo. <laughs> um, good. I don't know. You're looking at me like going, how do you want to follow it? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever there's a moment where we're both looking at each other like that, Lauren, it means we're like, what are, you, what are we going to do? <laughs> Which way are we going? Are we going for a break? Are we, we going to make it worse? Are we, are we going to are we are gonna say something offensive? Are we going to do an accent? Can you just, before we go to this break, mm-hmm. can you show Lauren your, your Geordie accent in full? Lauren. I didn't know where that sentence was going there. All right. Okay, good. <laughs> you show Lauren the problem you've got down there. See if she's seen it before. Oh, he's got, he's got a sore dick at the moment. Oh. I haven't. It's fine now. Is it? Is it back in the game? I sex last week and I stubbed it. Stubbed it? On a fanny or a table? <laughs> <laughs> Nailed it. Oh, shit. I like, come out, at, at, like, Jordan, uh-huh. and then, like, instead of going back in, it, like, hit her fucking thigh or something. She's got really hard thighs. Yeah, it was, like, it was literally, like, yeah, Oof. it was it was not fun. He's, he's she also back. listened to the podcast when I talked about that in detail. She found it very funny, very luckily. Um <laughs> <laughs> It's easier to ask for forgiveness than permission to tell love stories. Um, let me draw the accent. Uh, yeah, can you yeah. can you give him a a child a chal- I'm not saying my, mine's much better, but this uh-huh. is particularly fun. Can you give him a a Geordie sentence? A Geordie so sentence. Howie, I'm going into town. Howie, I'm going into town. Nailed it. Sorry, <laughs> I don't know why I thought it'd be funny because he's just <laughs> is that Walker or Blake? Yeah, it's, 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 Gate Eddish. Yeah, <laughs> nailed it. Yeah. So oh, wait, I'm going into town. I'm going to the Eldon Square shopping centre for some Nando's. <laughs> who is your favourite Newcastle player of all time? <laughs> the um, man who sang for Gandhi time. My, <laughs> he played for Newcastle? He did. Jimmy Nell? <laughs> no, was, was Gaza on it? Oh, yeah. Didn't Gaza go into Gaza I think, I, I, think a, I think a Jordy would know Gaza's name before going, no. <laughs> You know the man who went fishing after after that guy went mental. Was that school that would be shot because of that? You know what was he called? Raoul Moat. Raoul Moat. As if you don't know Raoul Moat's name. You didn't know Gaza's name (laughs) three seconds ago when you pretended to be a Geordie. You fucking stub dig motherfucker. (laughs) Stub dig. Raoul Moat. Yeah, we all everyone knows Raoul Moat though. You can't forget that. Loads of footballers, there's only one round mode. There's only one round mode. One round mode. If you don't know what we were talking about, a Geordie guy went fucking bananas yeah. and went on a rampage with a gun. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, and then he was hiding or like spotted or something near mine. Um, and I remember like trying to go into school. I was like 15 and all the gates were locked. And I was like, oh, why can't I get in? And they were like, well, if I had to lock the gates because they're all moat. And I was like, well, I'm not fucking him. I'm not like... <laughs> He's, He's in, in disguise. disguise. <laughs> Five foot, like little toothpick of a girl. I was like, he's not in me Jane Norman carrier bag. Like he's definitely not in here. Checking you for firearms. <laughs> and then Paul Gascoigne turned up there, didn't he? Aye. Paul Gascoigne chicken. went in a taxi mm-hmm. with some fishing equipment because apparently he knew Raoul Moat and had been... Fishing, fishing with him or something yeah. and took some cans of lager and some chicken and some chicken down. and was surprised when the police <laughs> wouldn't let him through the security cordon that's one of the best tweets of all time isn't it Joe from the police account oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Paul Gascoigne survived at the scene with some chicken and a fishing rod <laughs> one of the best tweets of all time <sighs> who who in the police is like I've got to justify my job here guys <laughs> yeah. I know these I know there's a firearm situation and people could lose their lives but I've got a live tweet it 
Reckon they higher than in turn. <laughs> and he was just like, I've been told to keep an eye on the social media and I need to update them. It's also 2-0 to Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> Should we have a break? Yeah, I think Before we, we have to. a breakdown. <laughs> Called you a stub dig. <coughs> All right there, lids. I want to tell you about our sponsor, Supreme CBD. If you've not yet used Supreme CBD or any CBD products, try them now. They can actually improve your quality of life. If you've got any problems with sleep, anxiety, any skin issues, I've got it. I use it. It's really good for your skin. It comes in gummy bear form. You've got sprays. You've got tablets. It's incredible for improving your general health and happiness. Try it out at supremecbd.com. UK and use our code WORD, W-O-R-D, to save 30%, 30% off all orders with code word, WORD. Nice one. How long have you two known each other? Because we've known each other pretty much since we started. Yeah. When did you start? 2012. But yeah. So I, was I remember meeting you was 2013 at the BBC BBC New Comedy, New Comedy, Comedy Award, Award in Manchester. Yeah. yeah. That was a bit of a, a weird one. Did you ever do that? The BBC New Comedy Award. Uh, 1848. <laughs> <laughs> it was different times. Other people doing like Queen Victoria banter. Did you I do it? Hack. I remember who won ours. The New Comedy Award I did in 2002. Yes. How did yeah. you get on? I got to the semi-finals in London. Mm -hmm. And I, there was two, two semi-finals. Gary Delaney won his one. Mm -hmm. And what's he ever fucking done? <laughs> and then in mine, I lost to a guy called Paul Carenza. Oh yeah, who is still that name rings a bell. Yeah, he's a so he's a pro comic, mm -hmm. but he's a, a Christian as well, mm. and uh, that has really got in the way of his career. I think really, yeah, he's quite a devout Christian, and and um, I to be fair, that's not fair. He's I've I haven't gigged with him loads. I think I saw him once about ten years later, but he he books a gig in Rutland, which oh, I think yeah. is the like the smallest county in England, uh -huh. and he booked it in a church. And mm. you, you, it, you know when you go to a church, it's clearly a, quite a modern church and they're dead sound. Yeah. But the the vicar was like, okay, so we'd love to have you. They were so friendly, lovely dressing Aww. room. And you actually quite a modern church. And you gigged on the stage and they were like, so we don't, we just actually don't do any swearing. Mm. You know, you know, we don't mind an occasional B. <laughs> What's a B, bitch or bastard or bell? Maybe a B, maybe Balls. a B. Bollocks. <laughs> All the Bs. All the Bs. <laughs> but not in that. Not that many bees in one. What did he sentence. mean by bee, though? Bastard. 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 Maybe. So bitch. S. Maybe an S. But no Fs and definitely no Cs. That's the conversation we had before we went on. So <laughs> just a game of countdown. Yeah. Just, What's sorry. S? Super cunt. Shit. Oh. Super, yes. <laughs> Super cunt. <laughs> that took you 20 seconds, though, didn't it? <laughs> Give me. Um, but yeah, they, they were my semis. And I think Nina Conti went on to win it. Oh. Back in the Ds, mate. Who was your I BBCs? I won. Oh, yeah. I think Brennan won it. Oh yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe. Oh no, did he win it? I, I I think he got to the final. Maybe we never got out the heat. Both had very good gigs. Though, I remember yeah. that. It was a good a night. Good one. I was so young. I was like nineteen. Jesus. Oh, Where nice. was your first ever gig? Chili Arms in Heaton. Oh, there yeah. you go. It was for so you think you're funny. Um, because like obviously when you first get started in comedy, especially like in Newcastle, we had the stand and that was it. I was like, well, how do you start gigging? So I knew about that competition, just turned up to the chilly arms and was like, aye, this'll be fine. And then I uh, kind of didn't think anything else of it. And I was with Lost Voice Guy. He was in my heat and he didn't get through. And again, what's he ever gone on to do <laughs> with himself other than win a quarter of a million quid on a talent show? Because he's really good. Um, <laughs> but I was at Tea in the Park at the festival and it was uh, Julia, the person who runs it. She rang us and I was pissed in the field. And I was like, What? She was like, we just need you to come down to Edinburgh next month because you're through at the semi-finals. And I was like, no, I'm not. And she was like, no, you are. You are. <laughs> and I was like, oh. I'm bored of comedy now. I was like, that wasn't in the plan. Right. I would have been 18 then. That I was even amazing. I was waiting for my A-level results. And what, what, was it, what was it that made you want to do stand-up? Were you always been a fan of comedy? Because it's quite a thing to, to like 18, 19 go, I'll just, I'll just go and enter a competition. Yeah. See, I what was What made you want to do comedy? Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> No, but I, no, but I mean, what? What are your goals? <laughs> no, sorry, like it just, why does no one love you? <laughs> yeah, why are you sad? Um, no, I just I mean, I, I, I suppose when you ask the question of like, oh, why did you get into comedy? It is like really hacky question. But what mm -hmm. at eighteen, as an eighteen-year-old girl, that's not that. It's just 
it's great. I just wanted to know I'm where. Still getting fingered and stuff. Don't worry. Like, oh, I wasn't. God. <laughs> you. Oh well, then I withdraw the question then. As long as you're getting finger banged, like, yeah, I'm on. I'm not a lesser or anything. I wasn't a total little weirdo. I don't think no demographic of people talks about getting fingered more than Geordie women. Oh yeah, we love it. Yeah. <laughs> I have experience sport. of that. <laughs> oh, actually, on a Patreon episode, I sort of teased the story, didn't I? Oh, yeah. Is this the story I know? Yeah, it definitely is, because I started telling a story, uh-huh. and it made him think of it, and he had, like, a 30-second, like, felt like he'd fucking malfunction. Genuinely. I'd suppress that night. Yeah, until from I memory. Told How much better is this? How much better than this? Uh, yeah. Lauren, why did you want to get into comedy? Oh, sorry, can we just pause that as Adam has a panic attack <laughs> yeah. while thinking about fucking a girl in a bush? Go. Oh, by the yeah. So by the way, Lauren, my friend Lauren, good friend, this fucking cunt on the couch over here, right? When I known you for seven years. <laughs> yeah. When I battled Maisie Adam on roast battle, she told Maisie this story so that she could use it on the television. Oh, you rat! Well, I felt a bit <laughs> sorry for Maisie because I knew Maisie didn't know Adam that well, and I was like, right, so I'll message Maisie and I'll see if she needs any like help or any gossip. It's unprovoked. Maisie didn't ring her and go, got anything. She volunteered. Volunteered. That's exactly what you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's good fun. Level the playing field. <laughs> to be Snakes fair. don't hiss, they come on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I messaged her and I was like, oh, I've got this story and it's brilliant. I was like, if you can find any way to make a joke about it. And I don't ditch her in the uh, end. She Missed didn't. an opportunity. Golden opportunity. Right. Stop teasing this story. Tell this fucking story. I don't story. actually think we can tell it. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Upset me. Um, me and Lauren were on a nice out. Why were we on a nice out? We'd been gigging together in Newcastle. Yeah. Oh, the alphabet. The alphabet. So we did a double header preview night. Lauren arranged it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was boss that one. Eh? It was really I think good. It was better than any show I had in Edinburgh that year. You know those previews. Yeah, when you're like, you're like this is I'm be getting great. nominated, yeah. <laughs> and three days in, you're like, I'm going home in debt. <laughs> I've, I've had that happen in Darlington. Have you ever had Neil Jolly go, come and do the Darlington? Oh, yeah. And it's like the weekend before the the fringe, you've done like ten previews. You're like, this is singing. Yeah. And then that's the Sunday night, and by the first preview in Edinburgh, you're like, I'm gonna die. <laughs> I'm gonna die. <laughs> Awful. So we'd done the alphabeti, mm-hmm. and then uh, your family were there, and yeah. a few of your friends and stuff, and we went out. Was it me, you, and it ended up me, you, and your, at the time, boyfriend? Yeah, because I was living, that was the house I lived in, where I lived with me ex, and the boy I was currently going out with. That was that house. Yeah. Is all your life situations like a sitcom waiting to happen? Pretty much. I work at the Morrisons with me mum. It's a new drama on the BBC. <laughs> this sitcom's crazy. It's my ex and my current boyfriend. Do you know what pisses me off though? When I like, obviously like I tweet a lot about my life and stuff that's going on and people are like, hey, should write a sitcom. And I'm like, no, I'd never thought of that. No. <laughs> I'm living one. Oh, never mind. Um, but yeah, yes, so I, I, lived I was in that staying house. in yours, wasn't I? Yeah. Because although, you know, we made a little bit of money from the preview, you're not paying Newcastle hotel rates. No one can afford 12 quid when you're coming up <laughs> as a comedian. Newcastle's hotel rates are fantastic. They're always cheap as fuck. It's wonderful. Um, but I- Thanks for that Newcastle <laughs> tourist information. <laughs> Public service Someone, announcement. <laughs> someone sponsored by the Ibis Gated. <laughs> and do you know when you're in a Newcastle hotel, you can shave your balls with the equipment from manscaped.com. <laughs> <laughs> Use the what? Use the promo code word. <coughs> and I don't remember how I found this. Let's call her lady. Lady. This lady. We'll be generous. <laughs> what in a gay bar? What in powerhouse? It wasn't a man before anyone. It wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't a man. Hey, I know you like a ten pm, but <laughs> oh no, like this wasn't. So what that reference he's just made at 10 p.m. Uh-huh. Carl made a joke a couple of weeks ago that yeah. said, you know, like at the end of a night, like six o'clock in the morning, uh, yeah. when there's only a few people around who are like awful, but you're like, I need something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Carl said that I go for them at 10 o'clock at night <laughs> just to play it safe. Spread button. Right. <laughs> Spread button. That's disgusting. Um, Get it when it's reduced, but not like reduced to clear. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's like this is going off tomorrow. <laughs> Morrison stuff's twerking it. <laughs> Get one with um, a whoop stick. It go on. So we were hammered, or yeah. at least I was. Oh yeah. We were all hammered, but I was hammered, hammered, and I was single at the time. And ha- 
like Carl, we've spoke on the Patreon episodes, and if you're not already a patron, patreon.com slash have a weird pod, you get all the juicy details of a lot of this stuff. We can't not tell this today with Lauren being here, though. I used to get ridiculously drunk every time I went out, like blackout drunk, and I only remember mm -hmm. like little flashes of this night. That's why last week when I got triggered for this, <laughs> I literally got all of them at once, and it was like, you know when, like, someone's taking photographs of you with the flash on, but you're not really expecting... You know, um, also, while this was happening, I was telling a story that was uh, unusual, and I was so into telling it that I didn't realise what was going on for a lot of it. Then I watched it back on video, <laughs> and there's a whole bit of Adam going... <laughs> <laughs> He was literally having, like, an epileptic fit through shame and guilt. <laughs> oh, God. Go on. What are you up? I'm telling it. He's telling it. Where so we were in Newcastle. Mm -hmm. Right, Carl, we were in Newcastle. Okay. And we'd done a gig together. And uh, I was staying in a lot of... Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> Cha. It must have been late as well, because this is a club that's open to like five in the morning, which I think is why we were there. It has like multiple floors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got, what's it called? Powerhouse. Oh, Powerhouse. Powerhouse. It's a gay club in Newcastle. And I don't know if it's deliberate, but there's a little sign that says entrance round the back. Yay! And it's just proper. I don't know if they thought that one through, but is it it's near, Is it the Pink Triangle? Is that what it's called yeah, in there, Newcastle? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's like the, the well, Life the Centre. The Life Centre. Yeah. And yeah. then there's like the 16 venues for the. It's, All in. Yeah, very. Yeah. Yeah. So, You've gone so pale. <laughs> Are you sure it wasn't a man? It wasn't a man. Okay. Like, or she she certainly wasn't a man anymore. That's the best I can say. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say for absolutely sure. Is <laughs> she had fully transitioned. <laughs> My name's Barbara. <laughs> Come on, love. <laughs> it had a vagina. That's all oh, I can say. Oh, okay? Jesus. Um, I don't remember meeting her. Uh huh. But. We're on this night. I was third wheeling with Lauren and her boyfriend. Was it just us three? No, I think people from my work must have been out as well. There was definitely a group of us because we try to like a spectator sport watching. Yeah. Like we run and commentary the fuck out of it. Come on, it give me the story. Give me the story. So I just like, we were just going for it. Like, did you, did you, what, how did you meet on the dance floor? I, I honestly have got no idea. Do you remember Lauren? I remember like turning away, turning back. And I was like, Adam's found a friend. And then you're like, oh, we'll just leave them be. And then it progressed very quickly. On the dance floor? On the dance floor, on the seats in the little booth. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she had her hand in my pants. Yeah. We didn't fuck on the, on the dance no, floor. No. But she... <laughs> <laughs> Mama like that. Mama like that. Sounds like that. an Arctic monkey song. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that I fuck you on the dance floor. I don't know if you came for a woman or I don't know what you're looking for. Oh, good God. Stop making the eye at me. I'll stop making the eye at you. <laughs> yes. The thing is, right. Sorry. Here's the thing. Sorry. I'm not. Here's the thing, okay? When, you, when you're when you hammered, right? When I'm hammered, I certainly had a lot of confidence, but also, uh -huh. right? Like... I, I want to point out, this isn't a sexist thing. When Carl's talking about the 6 a.m. is at 10 o'clock, yeah. right? This is not a female thing. This happens with men as well, okay? Oh, yeah. They're, they're very keen for attention. And because they're the 6 a.m.ers, <laughs> they're not used to getting any. What time are you? I'm I'm a 6 a.m. as well. Right? Oh. I'm grim as well, okay? Right. I hear about quarter past four. So, if you give... it, it Like... When Lauren's like, she turned around and like, oh, there's, there's Adam with this girl. What would happen is sometimes, especially, you know, when girls just want to meet someone and go home with them, it doesn't take long when you're hammered to go from, there's no like, hey, can I buy you a drink? It's just like, you. And she's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So that's why it's easy to yes. miss the start of it. So what's from the other? <laughs> There's no, there's not like a protracted courting like Taylor's oldest time. <laughs> oh my goodness me, Adams in the dance of courtship. <laughs> so I think I'd just turn around and go, "Hey, <laughs> that's that's Jordy Love." Pretty much. It, it, you've just got the pronunciation. How? <laughs> and then you're away. And she's gone. Ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> And then we just <laughs> melded <Yeah. laughs> I've seen this. Do you like when Attenborough shows you like birds doing the dance? I've seen this so many times. 
<laughs> like the road. Which bird? <laughs> <laughs> Two big fucking Gannet. emus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think what I've done that. I yeah. mean, Lauren's turned around on me and like, oh, there. <laughs> the way you're making it out is, do you know when <laughs> New Zealand rugby team are playing <laughs> and they start doing the hacker? That literally sounds like you and this big lass in a fucking... <laughs> and Amazing. Stand back. It's mesmerising. Everyone, everyone, stand back. I've seen it before. Honestly, you'll tell your kids about this. <laughs> Stand back for health and safety reasons. Come on, give them space. Fuck if they fall onto you, you're gonna lose a limb <laughs> or a dick. I don't know which one's worse. <sighs> so like, <laughs> I just. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get an erection pack? <laughs> Taylor's old as time. Move the table, he'll stub it. <laughs> <laughs> this one's caught fire, on it? No. So, all I remember it oh. about it really was that it was like furious. <laughs> oh, it was excessive. It was like, <laughs> like it was like what? Uh, do you know, like, furious. have you ever seen like? <laughs> a tornado pick a car up. <laughs> it was like that. I just got sucked oh into this absolute. She was a unit, wasn't she? Yes. <laughs> like I, it was like she just picked me up. I, like in my head, we were just bouncing around the room from oh. corner to corner, table to table. Like a horny fucking pinball. I'm not making this up, though, am I? Yeah, not, like, we'd look there and he'd be there. Because we're trying to keep him, good friends, good friends. We're like, keep an eye on him. And then we'd look again and he's gone. We're like, how's he fucking upstairs? <laughs> <laughs> It's loaded. Just fucking tumbling round. <laughs> Doing judo rolls while necking someone. And then we're clocked like she had his hands in your pants. But it was so aggressive, I was like, has she lost a pound? Like, <laughs> what? She's trying to get a trolley. <laughs> but then I think the bounce have must have clocked you. <laughs> they got thrown out. <laughs> but then like five minutes later, they were back and we were like, pussies do have nine lives. This is amazing. <laughs> like, I don't know how he has got back in. Well, well how, I, I sort of remember that. Uh-huh. So we got thrown out because you're not allowed to get wanked off on the dance floor. <laughs> First not girl. in the rules Jesus Christ Newcastle has changed <laughs> It's just like It's frowned upon Is it? Right <laughs> so, I think what happened was When they threw us out Oh God <laughs> The, the dorm was like I can't let you back in uh-huh. I can't let you back in I got told to throw you out mm. And I think he was just hinting Like just go away and come back Yeah, yeah. So we did <laughs> <laughs> and they just like the other dorm and like he, I just gave him like a tenner or something to get back in. Yeah. Like a little you know the little whoosh. Did she get it out for you? <laughs> <laughs> it was in pound coins. <laughs> it took a while. But um <laughs> We got thrown out the again, I think. Yeah, you got, I swear you got thrown out at least three times. Yeah. And you just kept, like when someone dies in a video game, and I was like, he's back. <laughs> How did you, why didn't you just go and bang this girl? I well, did in the end. Well, why did you keep coming back? But at the end of the night, we couldn't find him. And so, I didn't know if Adam would remember me address. And I was like, have I given him me address? So we were like outside and we were like, Adam, Adam, couldn't find, <laughs> would check the takeaways. Cause I thought that's where you might be. <laughs> so, yeah. like, so what happened the was, um, the last time we got thrown out. Enough's enough. <laughs> enough's enough. Um, she was like, oh, 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 go, go. And I was like, I don't live in Newcastle. <laughs> so we'll have to go see yours. And she was like, oh, go, 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 go. And she, that was like, I was like, okay, well, if we can't Postcode. go to if we can't go to yours, yeah, we can't go anywhere. And she just dragged me behind the tr- like a bush. But the bush was right outside the club, so we probably would have been stood next to your bush, just yeah. like Adam. The and bush then was like twenty yards away. From we the gave up and went home. And then eventually, and I stayed up for a bit. And Adam started ringing this, and I was like, "Where were you?" And Adam just said three words, and I still remember them. He just went. In the bush. <laughs> 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 As if to be like, oh, of course. Ah. <laughs> Silly me. I checked Spice of Punjab in case you were getting chips. No, you were in the bush, of course. <laughs> um, Tell us all this time. <laughs> and I dropped her off in a taxi because I'm a gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> what happened in the bush? 
Carl. <laughs> Can we leave something to the imagination? He fucking ruined a squirrel's evening. <laughs> Me right off me fucking nuts. <laughs> you know when you couldn't keep your attention on that story a couple of weeks ago on the Patreon, I felt I felt like there was a bit of me like a bit annoyed. Like, come on, man, keep your focus. <laughs> and then I thought, I bet, I bet that story better be good enough. Oh, spectacular! Touche, fella. <laughs> Touche to the unit, to the squirrel, to the bush. To the New Zealand rugby team, that was absolutely worth the wait. But like, this is how small Newcastle is. We must have been out with someone oh, from my no, work because no, 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 I remember no. he, the one of the lads we were out with from my work, texted us a few weeks later, and he was just like, "I found her." And it was just a picture, and I was like, "How did you find her? Why have you spent this time looking for her?" You found th- what? I've got a picture of her on my phone. Somewhere. No, 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 no. <laughs> Send me no, the picture, no, please. No, sh- you can't. No. No, I don't ever want to see it. it up on right, the YouTube. I'm sliding it in now. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. So uh, I've got you a coffee page. We can't do that. That's worse than naming someone. No, uh, I can't see that ooh, picture. Ooh, I can't see that picture. Oh, she's no, touching. I can't see it because oh. the listeners will screenshot it and they'll Hang send on. me. Can we pop a picture of a bush right now <laughs> and a squirrel? <laughs> no. Oh, God. No, 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 no. Do you no. know it's your podcast? And if you don't want it popped up, you don't have to have it. It's all right. You're in control. He's fucking not. <laughs> Oh. Hail as old as time. It's a great night. So, Carl, do you have any questions? <laughs> yeah, that, oh, sorry. Po- so, Lauren, you were saying you got into comedy. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> that was a boring question. Bushes. <laughs> yeah, that was it. The reason I got into comedy at 18 is I to honestly watch think this man fucking a bush. Right. Uh, my, like, I, I'm a good guy now. You know, I've matured. You know, got, you know, specific taste in, you know, nice ladies. I do now. Yeah. 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 Right. And, but when I was younger, you know, I've got... Why do I feel like you're doing, like, a YouTube apology video? <laughs> I, I've got... Um, this is more stammering than, like, the Tories at one of their briefings, isn't it? As you can see, you know, the COVID... The shutdown. My, my, my managerial... My club's managed women slept with. You know, it's not, like, the most... Um, illustrious. Illustrious, you know. There's a few... You've got to start in the lower divisions, mate. Yeah. And I think, honestly, without any shadow of a doubt, by some distance, that is my low. Yeah. Yeah. I'm blessed really? I got to share it with you. Really? That's his apple and Nicky's really? <clears throat> really? Say it again. Knowing the stories I know. <laughs> really? <laughs> I won't say it. <laughs> Don't. Really? Have you got any questions, Carl, specifically not about Adam's sex life? <laughs> yeah, I don't really know how to follow that. Yeah, it's not, um, not gonna, should we do have a word or two? I've got, I've got some other words, yeah. yeah. It's time I have a word. It's time to have a word. Oh, oh. Oh, there's so much sadness problem. in your eyes. You're dancing like a divorce guard in a wedding. You can't fuck <laughs> a girl in a bush. Now it's just a final 10%. Sense. Got a new soundboard coming. Should be ready for Monday's Patreon. Very exciting. Uh, this is from, I don't know the name. Sorry, person, but you'll recognise it. Hi, Lids. I absolutely love the pod. Keep up the good work. I keep getting in trouble from the wife. One, for binge listening to it, and two, for saying, oh, Jesus, 50 times a day. Oh, Jesus. The kids keep saying, and the, what? The kids grass me up for saying it to the fucking rats. <laughs> <laughs> I just burped into the mic. Sorry. Oh. Adam looks in agony. What's up, mate? It's really hurt you telling that story, isn't it? I feel like I've opened a wound. Ooh, nice. I certainly did that night. Hey, hey <laughs> Fanny. Um, <laughs> carry on. Adam, that was, oh, that goal was open and you <laughs> broke your leg. Should have just walked away from the goal. <laughs> Gerard! <laughs> Not going to lie though, there was a couple of years later when I was living in London. Keep it It was gone. when we were doing English Comedian and uh, Simon Lomas, lovely Simon Lomas, was already staying at my house. And then you kind of just rang us in the afternoon and were like, I'm staying too. And I was like, okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was with the lad who I've just broke up with at the time. And we went back to the house after the gig and you and Simon had disappeared. And generally got a point. I was like, he's done it again. <laughs> oh no, he's done it again. But this time he's led Lomas astray. <laughs> And I kept getting messages. I didn't. Off. I didn't. I kept getting messages off Simon. He was like, "I'm really sorry, Lauren. I'm trying to get him to come home, but he just won't." And I was like, "It's fine, Simon." And then he was like, "He's now insisting we get crisps." And I was like, "You go get your crisps. <laughs> it's fine." 
Uh, I, look, I am a bit of a night. Once I've had a drink. You know, you've told me that story. <laughs> yeah. You told me that story when we were gigging away once and you came up and got, this is like a few years ago. And I've heard that story. I was like, I've heard that story. Yeah. When I've had a drink, I won't go home. I know. If I've had a certain amount, like I won't leave. I'm having fun. And I, if I go home, the fun ends and I don't want the fun to end. Yeah. So I'm not going home. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Look, Tom's nodding. Yes, Tom. He's on board. <laughs> I'd love to see what Tom the intern wouldn't nod at. Yeah. The thing is about euthanasia. <laughs> euthanasia should be legal. Left turn. <laughs> it should. If you want to die, you, the government shouldn't be allowed to say you can't. Yeah, it's easier killing your nana than killing a dog, say. It's yeah. much harder putting a dog down than it is your nana. Yeah. Yeah, because dogs are just more difficult and more important. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Well, your nan's mush by the time she gets to that point, isn't she? <laughs> mush. Mush. Anyway, let's get back to this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> She's a fucking angel. Your nan's mush, anyway. <laughs> anyway, we've been together 14 years, married five. She has this horrible habit of buying things in the house that we're not allowed to use. One of them just for show, idiots. I've got cushions I can't sit on. I've got candles I can't light. Towels in the bathroom that can't be touched. And if we do row, I have to sleep on the couch. It's fucking mental. I don't get it. Please have a word. Her name is Gemma Smith from Hull. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, a lot of the emails and please don't use my real name. Could you keep me anonymous? We've, we've recently had to edit out names. <coughs> Someone commented on the YouTube like, are we editing out names? It's because I started reading something. And at the end of the email, I went, please keep my name anonymous. We were like, fuck. <laughs> this guy's like, here is my wife's full name. Postcode. This is her postcode. Place uh, of work. Yeah. <laughs> P.S. Sometimes the arguments that got, get that bad. I have to secretly go to the bathroom and wipe my willy on one of the towels. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you come back. So basically, she buys shit for the house that they're just for show. Okay. And he fucking hates it. Right. Yeah. So she's buying shit. I know that the, the, the thing, it, it makes sense because lads left to their own devices, and this is a generalization, it'll be a bit basic, it'll look a bit glum, it'll look a bit functional. So I get why partners, traditionally wives, girlfriends will go, can we make it look nice? But it, there's there's a line where it's like I want to I want it to look like a show home I want it to look like Instagram and you're not allowed to fucking sit on it when it's like well, that is literally what it's for. Here's the thing, right? Here's my opinion, if I may. Yeah, well, you you always do. <laughs> <laughs> the cushions, oh, and the candle, I get, I get it. The day to look nice, right? Yeah, right. You want a cushion we can't sit on? Okay, let's. So so it's saying instead when you sit down you move. That's yeah. annoying, isn't it? It's fucking it is okay. annoying. Batch it. Candles that can't be lit. I don't agree with it. I okay. wouldn't do it. But you understand it. But I get it. You're showing empathy. Yeah. The wow. towels, she can go fuck herself. Towels are functional only. No one ever walks into a bathroom and goes, oh, that towel looks lovely. Bollocks. <laughs> what about bed cushions? I've got some decorative bed cushions now. Because I'm now trying to woo the ladies. <laughs> That's so how you I do bring it, like, them in and I'm like, I'm not I've gonna got a throw. In. Not gonna and the in. throw... <gasps> Matches the cushion. Oh, oh, that's it. Nick is I'm off. Pregnant. Oh no. <laughs> oh. It's happened again. <laughs> what's your What's your feelings, Lauren? I, I can get the cat because to me, a candle, even if it's not lit, still <laughs> smells nice. We've, Look, we've, we've literally one. got one. Got one here. Here's one we made earlier. But the towels I'm with you. Like towels aren't decorative. Nah. That would yeah. wind me up so much. My mum in the living room, we've got like a little bin in the living room. And if she's just emptied the bin, you're not allowed to put anything in the bin. That pisses me off. I'm like, oh. it's a bin. It's its very purpose. And she's like, well, I've just emptied it. I'm like, so what's the window of time between bin being emptied <laughs> to when I'm allowed to put rubbish back in the bin again? Well, how would you feel if I came round to your house and put rubbish in your bin? I'd be like, good. It's not on the fucking floor then, yeah. is it? Do you know what I want to have a word with? Very Side good. note, and it's on point. Uh -huh. You know when you're like walking down the street, right? If you're walking down the street, and you've got like this, yeah? And you're done with it. Yeah. And you walk past someone's path and their bin is right near the end of the path. Yeah. Would you put it in? Would you lift it up and put it in? I, I would. I would. I'd, yeah. I can understand. Yeah, I know what's going to happen. Someone's going to come out and go, don't use my bin. Yeah. It's better in their bin than on the road. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 would I would try like, and put it in the right bin. In. <laughs> go on. I would. <laughs> so I wouldn't do it. I'd try and put it in the right bin. I yeah. try and put it in the recycling. Yeah, totally. Because just putting it in their general waste when it's recycling is annoying. Totally. All right, okay. Mm. Totally. The annoying thing is probably like, don't put like a PC in there. 
if they haven't got the space. No, these moan. I've put a packet of crisps in before, in the bin bin, which is where they go. You put yeah. the crisps in the bin bin. And, and you're like, don't use me bin. And you're like, why? It's yeah. what it's for. Is this going to take up too much space, this fucking pe- spaceless packet of crisps? No, because you'll go around telling everyone that you've done it, and then everyone's <laughs> going to be like, oh, yeah, if you want to get rid of your crisp packet, go round to number 29. Yeah, it's bullshit. bullshit. You're all what, gimps. What about when people have got a skip outside the house? That's my favourite. Oh. We had a woman just around the corner from us rented a skip and stood near it for a lot of the day. Oh. She got super competitive. She covered it with tarpaulin and then she was stood at one point as we went to drop Etta off at nursery and she was stood having an argument with her daughter and she was holding a coffee cup. <laughs> like she was like, so bastard! <laughs> and someone's just gone, oh, fuck it, I'll just pop it in there. And it's obviously messed with all her own CD and all the mental. It was just, it was a fucking eight ton skip, and she had this like it was just, oh, she was so fuming. Must be annoying though if you hired Let a it skip. Let go. If you hired a skip and like you've got exactly eight tons worth of stuff to go in, <laughs> and then someone fucking fucks your ratio up by lashing a coffee cup in, must be annoying. I feel for her. <laughs> She's such a twat when you play Devil's Advocate. Yeah, the, but the, the, what's, what's your towel situation though? with decorative but do you because we had a question way back uh-huh. about uh using the same towel like a couple just use the same towel see how we used to do it was we had different color towels but when all my stuff came back i, w- I told him he could keep the towels in the christmas tree <laughs> which is the most bleak combination of like because you know they're the, like the shared things we bought together and i was like i keep the towels keep the christmas tree i'm feeling generous Wow. Have a bath, put the tree up, but I took the decorations, so. <laughs> I ex texted me the other day and asked if she could have the Christmas tree back. I've said, yeah. You should have fucking broken for the dog. Yeah. You can, if I, th- if oh, I get to do yeah. one that walk a week. Trade. One walk a week? Yes. yes. Not in your fucking tree, do you? You've given up your leverage. Dog. You've given up your leverage, though, haven't you? Here's the, has she got the tree already? No. That's it. Still got it. Hold the tree over. I haven't even told her I've found it yet. I think separate towels is, never mind display, I like a separate towel. You're Makes a bit sense. like worried about OCD and that, aren't you? I don't think anyone should have to use the towel that I've used. But I've seen how boys get dried after the shower and it's a full on like floss in the arse, isn't it? So I'm like, no, no. You can't do oh, that. I hate the... people who do that because, like, I will use it. I'll use a towel for like two, three, four days. Uh-huh. Like three or four showers. You don't use a towel. You don't fresh towel every shower, do you? You keep it. Oh, towel. God, no. You keep it for a few days. What kind of member of the royal family are you? <laughs> <laughs> I do bring your own towel. <laughs> But Jesus, you can't use a towel if you've fucking rummaged it up your fucking batty crease. <laughs> I've started uh, hair drying my balls. Mm. What? It's a little treat. I, I just, I, you know. Uh, what? That can make it unfair time. I'm not cooking my balls. <laughs> <laughs> not like fucking chestnuts open and open over an open fire. <laughs> I just, in the winter, when does your gooch get to breathe? So... I just I just give it a little bit of a I've got a little travel uh, hair dryer that Laura doesn't need because we're going nowhere lockdown recycling and I just I squat a little bit and I give myself a nice little aeration and sometimes I wonder what my dick what my dick's thinking as it just hits like, like oh, do you ever like use a hair dryer down there Laura? do you ever use a hair dryer down there I don't want a hot fanny no <laughs> next question I don't is there an ideal temperature for your genitals to be at thirty eight point yeah. six degrees is it let me just check. <laughs> <laughs> I am um, yeah I think I think that is but I think it's more for men like you, if your balls get too hot you're fucking done out here I just feel like I just can get a little just need a bit of air to it that's how that's how I'm feeling I wear cycling shorts a lot that <laughs> sounds like such a nonce you need air to them but doesn't that mean you want them cooling no I just just I just want to you know sometimes when you come out of the, this is my point this might be a not like you come out of the shower you give yourself a dry and sometimes like it feels like you've not completely dried do, and I just like a little bit of air, a little bit of air dry. No, I don't relate. Do you, Carl, do you what? ever hair dry your body, including your balls? Um, No. No. Can I, I, can I, I Tom? My hair takes long enough, so by the time I've done it, my balls are dry. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be the problem. You've got yeah. the wear. You've got... <laughs> <laughs> I'm now seeing a major problem <laughs> because I have no hair anywhere else, so I can be out of the shower and dressed in about 120 seconds. Yeah. So yeah, that might be the problem. It's very fast moving. I need it accelerated. Can and we, I know we don't set homework, but for the next episode, 
Can you just try hair drying your balls? No, I don't want them to overheat and I lose all my babbers. Just tr- try. Lose all my babbers. Try. You can overheat Don't it. do it in the microwave. <laughs> Zan told me to fucking dry my balls. Beep, boop, beep, beep. Oh, I'll put it on the cold setting. I've got one of those air dryers that has a cold see setting. How yeah. See how it feels. See how it feels. Very much. It's not going to feel bad. Anything blowing on your balls is good news, isn't it? Uh, I've got a question. Yeah? Um, oh, we're not ending on a have a word. Fucking controversial. If it? your brain was a hard drive and it was nearly full, mm-hmm. what memories would you delete? I feel like it is. Nearly I think full. he's just told the story that he would literally yeah. like <laughs> <laughs> control all delete on that whole fucking night out. Yeah. I, I think I find it mad that like, you know, I'll forget important stuff. Like you've been asking me to bring in my passport and a utility bill for like three weeks, right? And I can't remember to do that. But I can still remember the phone number we had when I was seven. Why yeah. am I keeping that? Why is it holding on? Absolutely. Because there must be a reason that my brain's holding on to that number. number. Yeah, the telephone. No- I know the telephone number from my childhood. What is that? Some of the... What is it? 01772 <laughs> I don't know. Why do I know it? Why do I need even need to know it? Up until last year, I knew Babalo's number. What's Babalo's? Babalo's was the pizza place that me and Carl used to order. 282. 2912. 282 So do I. They used to get, used to get a 10-inch pizza with any two toppings a portion of fries and any can you wanted for three pound fifty fuck oh. off yeah we used to fuck mate that makes you sound as old as me <laughs> <laughs> you used to be 89 pence for 20 l and b how like can seven you, and eight quid for that now how, yeah. how can you get that much food it's quality we used to have little nights in have a babalo's night loads of rum loads of rum fifa babalo's <laughs> can i just say what's changed <laughs> <laughs> the price. <laughs> <laughs> you, you literally told that story. Like, things are different nowadays. <laughs> yeah, pay bloody double that. And drink better rum. Oh, God. Guys, is that a POD? I think we've had a podcast. Have you got anything you want to plug, Lauren? Oh, fuck all. Christmas dinners are on at Morrison's. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Can you have a Christmas dinner in the cafe? Wait, we're shut at the minute because of bloody restrictions, mm. but Christmas dinners are on, yeah. On Christmas Day? Fucking amazing. We're shut Christmas Day, but Christmas even boxing day. I think they're on to like 3rd of January. Oh, I thought you meant like you would do, they were opening like the pubs on Christmas days. Oh, that, God. That'd be fucking bleak, that wouldn't it? What are you doing for Christmas this year? Morrison's. Taking me nan to the Morrison's Cafe. Oh, Jesus. I love the Morrison's Cafe, though. It's all right, isn't it? My daughter. It's used a to really go there with good option. all the time. Yeah. My nan lived in Belvale in Liverpool. And there's a Morrison's next to the shopping centre. And it was that was where we spent our Saturdays. Me and my mum, taxis to my nan's, go to Morrison's. Then my granddad had a little workshop in the attic. And we'd go up there and we'd make something. Nearly made a robot to go on Robot Wars at one point. Yeah. And in the end, he gave up. So I just put a fucking cardboard box and stuck a knife through it and put it on a remote control car. <laughs> yeah. So fuck a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that was a really nice family childhood memory. And yeah. towards the end, it went all oh, fucking weird, didn't it? And yeah. my granddad was upstairs. Yeah. They're both dead pipe bumps. Dead and gone. In the ground. Okay, Wholesome. well, this one's for them. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to plug? Just the death of your grandparents. Emails <laughs> <laughs> on Tuesday if anyone wants to come and pay their respects. <laughs> and the, uh, the wake is in the Morrison's Cafe. You know, right, my grandma died during lockdown. She died in oh. October and she was living with me auntie. She died in October? Yeah, last month? last month. That wasn't lockdown. I mean, I know that's well, not like, the point. Still like <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Adam. You're in the weeds here. Shut up, Lauren, you idiot. I wasn't in the lockdown. Bet anyway, you're alive. You... <laughs> it's cod all night. Sorry, Lauren. Tell us about uh, your loss. She was living with me auntie. And uh, we obviously were like, we went round to my auntie's, so, sort of like after to make sure she was all right. And my auntie just like completely solemnly went, I've had to tell the dog. And we were like, what <laughs> do you mean you've had to tell the dog? And she was like, well, the dog keeps looking for your grandma, so I've had to say, she's not coming back. I was like, I don't think the dog understands the death. The dog will understand. Not- yeah, because that's, <laughs> that's why it's difficult having a dog. You've got to explain grief to the dog. That's why it's you easier have- to have dogs than humans. Yeah. Do you not think it's really sad with dogs, though? Like, my dog, Minnie, has got fucking no idea where I've gone. Isn't that sad? You're like an absent father. Who yeah. Are. Isn't that sad? She'd be like, where's my dad? The dad who goes for a pack of cigs and doesn't come back. She's got no him. idea. She's got, you can't explain to a dog, oh, you know, sometimes nah. people drift apart and, nah. you know. She feels as emotionally attached to you as she does the tin opener. No, she opens doesn't. Her food. <laughs> you fucking absolute gobshite. Yeah. My dog loves me more than your daughter <laughs> you, loves you. You've been replaced by a utensil. No. I reckon Minnie loves me more than Etta loves you. 
I do. Do you reckon? I reckon. Yeah. I reckon. I tell you what we should do. I'll speak to me ex. Okay. Right. Yeah. And we'll we'll meet in the same car park. Right. right? And right. you let Etta run to you. Yeah. And you let Minnie run to me. And whoever gets there first loves your person more. In a, in a car park. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really. It's locked uh, Horrific. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll do a test of uh, loyalty between child and dog <laughs> in a car park. <laughs> Fucking, that sounds a bit robot wars. I tell you what, and when you're older and when Etta's looking after me, we'll see what Minnie's doing for you. <laughs> Not bad. Well, she's been taken away from me. Da, 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 da. <laughs> anyway, you're dead, Gran. This has been a fucking belter. Lauren, I'm so glad you came down on the train. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Uh, uh, what's your Twitter and all that? Just yeah, like... that's the best place to come follow us is at Lauren Patterson on Twitter. Okay. Yeah. Do it. Do it. Sweet. Thanks for coming. Remember? <laughs> she was called Julie. Do you know her name? I don't know her name. Oh. Don't know her name. <laughs> Go and wait for them to bring Real back shit. This Is Your Life. Jonah Lomu. <laughs> <laughs> Feel sick. <sighs> and that is a pod. Goodbye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. <laughs>